Hello, 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 hello. What's going on? What's cracker lacking? A random show back in your face, back in your area, coming at you live and direct. Random show settings. Random show settings, what's going on, what's really good, what's crackalacking my people, my homies, my compadres, my padres, my lales, my boobays, my dinghies, my lubies, what's going on, what's happening, what's crackalacking comedy gang, yeah, and the crowd goes wild, what's going on, hope you're all well wherever you are, hope you are fine, hope you are good, Random show settings with I, your boy Agostino Zinger. Today's going to be a little short one, maybe an hour and a half, maybe an hour tops. But we're going to run through some topics that I need to get through and get them to you live and direct, courtesy of me. For those of you that are tuning in live and you're enjoying what you see, you see what you like, throughout the duration of the show, why not smash the like button? Why not give me a little on there to let people know that you're enjoying the show that'll be much appreciated make sure you do that make sure you do that but yeah apart from that let's run into the show let's get cracker lacking first things first i wanted to get a look at my guy elephant graveyard so elephant graveyard's got a new video at the moment the new video from Elephant Graveyard is called Last Gasp, I think for relevancy or something like that. So I'm going to react to this live and direct with you guys today. I'm sure most of you have already seen it. It's called Last Gasp of the Redacted featuring Brendan Shaw, Joe Rogan, Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer, courtesy of the one and only Elephant Graveyard. So let's check out Elephant Graveyard's new video. Let's check out Elephant Graveyard's new blood clot video. We caught this opali off a of jetty in Marina Del Rey. And no joke, we saw trash bags <laughs> floating by. We saw a used condom, a giant used condom that just floated by, by us. And God almighty, look, even he's, I know this has been like color corrected and maybe it's been oversaturated and shit, but even his hands, he's got dirty fingernails. The fish looks like it's been, he's got it out of the back of it. He's got it from his back pocket or something, you know, like, He's put fish in his back pocket and then taking it out in his hand and then try to ugh, yucky yucky yuck. Froze this for a couple days and I thawed it out for him. Oh my god, look at that. Look at that carcass. Look at that flipping debris. Look at that horrendous shit that's on there. Look, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. God damn. God damn. Half days now, three days probably. The question of free will touches nearly everything we care about. Most of what is distinctly human about our lives seems to depend upon our viewing one another as autonomous persons, capable of free choice. But free will is an illusion. Our wills are simply not of our own making. Thoughts and intentions emerge from background causes of which we are unaware and over... Look at Elephant Graveyard getting all philosophical on us, yeah? Elephant Graveyard with that philosophy thing, yeah? That smart thing, yeah? That above double digit IQ thing, yeah? Three digit IQ thing, yeah? All right, cool. Introspection thing, yeah? All right, cool. Which we exert no conscious control. Don't you ever wonder why you are what you are? Never. I mean, don't you ever just look around at your life and think, what the hell even is any of this Not shit? Not really. How did I actually get here? What the I love hell it. am I even doing? So good. For instance, how does one become a stand-up comedian? I wonder that all well, the time. you must first be born with an intact <laughs> nervous system and then provided with a proper education. No freedom there. And at some point, you must decide to become a comedian. A result, presumably, of first wanting to become one. But from where does that want arise? Not from you, but from the result of an inexplicable combination of events and forces that you will never understand. To become a comedian, you must also have the talent for the job. And this is this is something that I realized is a um, misnomer and a false falsehood when it comes to stand-up comedy. I've covered enough stand-up on this channel. I know it's only a very small, you know, it's a very small sample size. And obviously most of these guys are redacted anyway. But I have to say, 
from the time that I've started the random show and from the time I've started talking about stand-up comedians, one thing I've realised, similar to DJing, in my opinion, I know some of you guys don't agree with this analogy, but I think stand-up comedy is very similar to DJing in that everybody can do it. Anybody can be a DJ. There's MIDI software now that you can download and use on your laptop. You can download DJ software for your phone. So the barrier of entry is super low. Same thing goes for the stand-up comedy. As long as you've got the confidence or the courage to go up on stage and talk in front of people, you can basically do stand-up. So because of that barrier of entry being so low, and I guess, yeah, the barrier of entry being so low, it invites a lot of people to start. And because of it, I think it gets... It gets um, inundated with loads of people that are terrible so i think the majority of djs are terrible the majority of stand-up comedians are terrible because it's just the nature of the game so you have to kind of find the good ones in f in all that flipping muck in all that crowded room you have to kind of sort through the good ones that's probably why at the moment especially with that la comedy crowd and stuff they're also like pally pally and pat each other on the back and stuff because it's the only way they can get gigs to kind of circle jerk each other because when it comes to pure as in ha ha he he laughability of these talent comedians is not very high so they're not going to sell you on the quality of their co on their comedy but what they'll sell you is on their relatability on their like podcast human shit it's never really about the stage i like, think about all your favorite stand-ups most of them aren't really great you know, most of them you don't like them because of their stand-up you like them because of their personality on the podcast more so there are some exceptions, but I think for the most part, most stand-up comedians are terrible in the same way most top DJs are terrible. But again, I could be wrong. Develop the best brains for the art. Becoming a comic requires effort. You must do many things deliberately and well and in the appropriate sequence year after year. But will you be the conscious source of this wanting? Will you be responsible for its... The way Joe Rogan talks about Whitney Cummings and then you see her actual stand-up, you're like... And that's the thing about Whitney. I think Whitney is way funnier, way sharper, um, just a little bit more of a of a pleasure to listen to when she's on the podcast. Even though she's a bit, you know, she can be a little bit exhausting and shit. She has a little bit of the Burt Kreischerism about her as well, right? With the flipping, you know, delusion um, of grandeur and whatever it may be. But I think in general, she's way more, she's way funnier on a pod than she's on stage. When she gets on stage, it's like, who the fuck is that? Prevailing over all the other things you want? No. If you succeed at becoming a comedian, you will suddenly one day find yourself standing on stage, microphone in hand, at the confluence of all the genetic and environmental causes. Man, look at that stage. Honestly, Brendan, what a big fuck up, man. That might have to be one of the biggest fumbles of all fumbles, but it's a really good learning. It's a really good, um, what you call it? Um, what's that fucking term? cautionary tale brendan shaw in 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 as like to not to half ass things not to take opportunities for granted because he was handed it on a silver plate showtime special look at that stage look at the big letters behind him will be surname lit up in stuff like look at it that's a professional stand-up fucking stage at the highest level two years in and then to go from that to that fucking cardboard cutout of the skyline on gringo papi like god damn how the mighty have fallen that led you to the or how the redacted have fallen develop along this line look he couldn't he couldn't believe it himself look at his face he couldn't believe it himself like how the fuck did i get up on here but he should he should have continued faking it till you make it this is when fake it till you make it should go into overdrive you fake it till you make it on that sort of stage but then you need to back it up you need to come come back again more jokes more banter more jokes more banter more specials work out your act work on your act Hire fucking writers. Do whatever needs to be done to keep yourself at that level because the fall off is going to be crazy. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, is a progressive brain disorder caused by repeated head injuries that leads to cognitive decline, including impaired decision making, unstable impulsive behavior, drug and alcohol addiction, memory loss, and problems planning carrying out tasks thank god he stopped drinking alcohol by the way he looks far better now with more combat cte symptoms can appear at any time following traumatic brain injury and the condition only worsens over time eventually leading to a full-on detachment from reality we do not have the freedom we think we have just as within a circuit an electron follows the path of least resistance so too do human beings and there's no telling where you'll end up. Rising 
Southern guy, 449 Quebec X-ray. Hey, uh, I found myself in a bit of a predicament. I'm in the air right now. 449, are you not supposed to be on that aircraft? Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you just take off? Jesus yeah. Christ. And you're not supposed to be on that aircraft? Uh, no. But what's going on? Are you flying the plane? Yeah. Usually these <laughs> bad... Gregor, you're too much, man. <laughs> ah, this is fucking crazy. This correlation, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this, but yeah, big up Elephant Graveyard. It's predictable oh, and stable. What a Things go about doing what they ought to. There's a moment where it changes. Boom! Shut up, shut up, shut up. He's having it. It's all over. Wow, Sean doesn't even know what happened. But the happened. universe, given its infinite. Vastness sometimes manifests into reality what we call karmic mutations. Coincidental waves of cause and effect that lead to circumstances that appear to make no rational sense. Yeah, so you hijacked the plane, is what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I'm in a kind of a bad thing, kind of a selfish thing. Jesus Christ, man. Jesus Christ, brother. Just a broken guy, got a few screws loose, I guess. Never really knew it until now. This isn't a sad thing. You want to try to do a barrel roll? Time to go nose down and call it a night. How we doing, my man? Another shot for the road? No, I probably shouldn't, man. I'm shooting my first comedy special tonight. How long you been doing it? Three years. Suppose your hero and mentor insisted to you that you should become a stand-up comedian. And so you do it. Is that your own conscious choice, or have you just been persuaded? And would he then be responsible for whatever terrible fate would surely await you in that pursuit? Ladies and gentlemen, from the Fighter and the Kid podcast, and below the belt on Showtime, give it up for the great and powerful Mr. Brendan Shaw! To be fair to Joe Rogan, as much as I, as much as I don't like the way he treated Brendan towards the end, because I feel like, you know, he kind of honey-dicked Ro- honey Brendan. He had him involved in stand-up. He welcomed him to his inner circle, right? He did all that flipping good shit to him. Gave him spots at the comedy store. Then as soon as he moved to Austin, he suddenly got standards. He suddenly was like, you know what? I can't endorse this terrible shit. And now he hasn't kind of given him a spot at the comedy mothership, even though he's given all his friends spots, right? It's fucking, it's a bit sad in that regard. But to be fair to Brent Rogan, he never said, I, I can't think of a moment or a video or a clip or an instance where Rogan said, Brendan Shaw is a funny stand-up comedian. I can't remember. Even that introduction, the great and powerful Brendan Shaw. He didn't say, big up my friend, my buddy, the funny, the hilarious Brendan Shaw. He's never once said, Brendan's funny on stage or as a stand-up. Never. So maybe he always knew, but he was trying to like, you know, he was biding his time hoping that Brendan would get better, hoping he would kind of, you know, start working on his act, hoping the writing will get tighter, hoping, 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 hoping. Then when it didn't happen, he was like, you know what, I can't do anything more. And just kind of, you know, kind of like took his hands off from it. But I still find it a little bit out of order how he hasn't given, just giving him a charity gig. Just give him a little, a little, okay, cool. Just because you're my boy. Because God damn it, man. It's got to be so embarrassing to be the only person in that fucking Joe Rogan crew who hasn't got a set, who didn't get booked at the Comedy Mothership, um, despite you being one of the fucking, you know, core guys. I think, if I'm not mistaken, even Eddie Bravo has performed at the Comedy Mothership. I swear to God. And Eddie Bravo does like stand up here and there. He's been doing it for a while, don't get me wrong, but he doesn't do it like all the time. I think Eddie Bravo's fucking performed at the Comedy Mothership, but still he hasn't. Absolutely horrendous and at, at this pace more than likely Chris D'Elia will get to perform on that stage before he does and Chris D'Elia has got fucking diddling alleg- allegations against his name can you imagine that I mean come on look at this this doesn't make any sense look at him stop deluding yourself these mutations are inherently unstable eventually the great cosmic gardener who goes by many names and takes on many forms comes along to pluck the anomaly out of existence don't be such a fucking they get to this spot where you know everyone knows there's something wrong and no one says anything you see the deterioration and no one steps in and then i talk to him alone man yeah i wonder what happened there what happened with that what, what happened with that alone what happened with that alone 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 conversation what happened was that a conversation where Brendan said, hey, my daughter's going through some issue? Was that a conversation where Rogan said to him, hey, no mothership for you in the future? I wonder what that conversation was about. Because it was very odd. Like, hey, Brendan, do you need to come to the toilet too? Brendan's like, yeah, I need to go to the toilet too. 
and they went off and had some talk. It's like, couldn't you have texted this to each other? Couldn't you have called each other? Who knows? But maybe Barogan wanted to have a face to face. But something happened. Something weird happened there. We'll find out probably later on. You know, Brendan's a bit of a loud mouth. You'll definitely tell us. There's something has to be done. Like now. You gotta get out. Anyone can do comedy. You just you might not be able to. Like you look, you might not have it in you. How many fucking professional stand-ups are there? <laughs> this side by side is hilarious. This side by side is hilarious. There's only like a thousand of us on earth. There's yeah. so fucking few. What do you want, the art form to die off? You gotta stop. Job is quit touring. Shab retired from comedy. Yeah, you know, I have to cancel Austin and Nashville. Usually I hate doing that. I think this time I just don't care. You had so many possibilities. You don't have a weird relationship with uh, social media and that stuff. A lot of negativity. You are starting to flourish. You're hilarious on podcasts. What, you know, that could just, I can't do it anymore. I'm tired, man. Lost all faith in social media viewers now oopsie persuaded again we do not have the freedom we think we have take for example charles whitman an unassuming man with no history of violence who suddenly one day in 1969 climbed to the top of the clock tower at university of texas austin campus charles spent 90 minutes indiscriminately firing upon the helpless campus crowd killed 17 people and wounded 31 before being felled by a shotgun blast to the head from a police officer. Damn. His autopsy revealed a significant brain tumor that had been pressing <laughs> on his amygdala, the part of the brain responsible. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> For anxiety and the fight or flight he reflex. He murdered harder than I've ever seen Whoops. him kill before. No freedom. It's like Again. a different person. <clears throat> I was surrounded by you, Callan, Bert, Tom. I wanted to be in that party. I was. I was so fortunate. I could, the stars aligned for me. I didn't really. Man, the times that man that it, he must he must really cry himself to sleep at sometimes, isn't it? What a good time to be alive. He, he really take it for granted. Or maybe <clears throat> Brennan should have been smart and just moved to Austin anyway. Fuck it, move to Austin and just hope by being there a lot. That Rogan just like gets worn down and he books shit at Comedy Mothership. Maybe that was the way to go. But he probably, you know, I, I doubt his wife probably would have wanted to leave LA. But that would have probably been the long term goal. If you wanted to stick with stand up, just move to Austin. Fuck it. Just move to Austin. Try and ingratiate yourself in the community. Try and become like um, an extended member of the fucking Kill Tony crew. Just try something just to kind of keep that tether to Rogan alive. Um, but, you know, he didn't. And here's where, here we are. Here we are at the moment that that was the golden age we took it for granted those days are over man and it's heartbreaking what did you do the direction you took popes swamis snake men all feeding at the same trough whose ideas who made that yeah i had to cancel austin and nashville usually i hate doing that i think this time i just don't care when you quit you you have to find meaning in your life like what did, what are you good at now just focus on family do my thing Unexpected problems? Good. Good. Don't get startled. Don't get frustrated. No. Get up, dust off, recalibrate, re engage, reload, and go out on the attack. What's up, guys? I'm Brendan Schaub. Yeah. Welcome to the channel. Yeah. This is Toontown. Oh, for fuck's sake. You gotta like the page, subscribe to the page, Toontown. also email right here. When Look at the start. Toontown. So like, subscribe <laughs> in the comment section. That's so good. Look at who look at look at that. Like and subscribe all over the gap. Fuck you know. Tune Town. Seriously, what are you doing? Tune Town? Let us know what you want to see. Let us know. Let us know. Some brilliant car. Not let us know. Let us know. I'm going to ask a bit. What happened to building fish tanks? What do you want to see? Let <laughs> us know. Why don't you just Where's show me tank? something? Isn't that how it's supposed to work? What made you go and be like, all right, I'm going to bomb forever? Uh, well, bomb forever is interesting. Let's do it. Bomb forever is fucking hilarious. He didn't mean it that way. He meant it more so like, hey, what made you decide to go down a career path that has a lot of resistance? There's a lot of failure. You do bomb a lot when you start stand up. It's kind of like what they ask regular comedians. But Brendan got so fucking triggered and butt hurt because he probably does bomb a lot and was like, well, bomb forever is so interesting. Was like, that was so brutal, man. Bomb forever. Dude, I've been here with a Latina, bro. You know why? They're fun and they're <laughs> right? Now that you're out, you 
you see it, right? The ego that I had at the time, that ego's insane. The narcissist from my, my girl's grandma died. Stage four pancreatic cancer. You know, what are you gonna do? I pumped her full of CBD. No, she passed away last night. Good. Game, set, match. And, uh, yeah, Grim Reaper came knocking on the door in Chicago. Grim Reaper came and knocking. Imagine that's how you describe your grandmother-in-law passing away. The Grim Reaper came and knocking. <laughs> it's the circle of life. You're out. Good. Charles left a note saying, quote, I don't really understand myself these days. Hello. I am supposed to be an average, reasonable, and intelligent young man. However, lately, I have been a victim of many unusual and irrational thoughts. These thoughts constantly recur. Hello. You never see a bald Native American. That's a legit That's point. You know, yeah, it's the only time you see them bald if they get scalped. You feel me? Connie's just different. It's just I've seen a lot of bald Native Americans. You've seen a lot of, no, you've seen a lot of bald Indians. What are you doing? After my death, I wish that an autopsy would be performed on me to see if there is any visible physical disorder. I told you to take care of your wife. What did I say? <laughs> Remember? Oh, yeah. It's public for what you do? Suppose you felt inadequate your entire life. Restless, knowing you're repulsive and without value. Disgusting. And all you wanted was to be liked. Nope. Suddenly you stumped. Fuck. He actually looks kind of cute here, isn't it? But with those piercing blue eyes, right? He kind of looks kind of cute here. Upon a neat little trick that gets and then, then suddenly you see that, you're like, whoa, jump scare. People don't want to be around you. The downside is that trick will slowly kill you over time. Would you follow that instinct all the way to your own grave? Of course. I still think he's going to outlive everybody. I'm not sure if you guys agree with me, but I still think Burt Crusher is one of those type of people. We all have those people in our lives, usually family members, who are just who just get away with it. They drink, they drink themselves to sleep. They take loads of drugs. They're always smoking. They eat really unhealthy, unhealthily, but they manage to just stay alive even though they don't do anything to kind of stave off or to kind of, you know, keep themselves in moderation. They just end up staying alive. So I think Burt's one of the type of people. Burt's going to probably end up outliving fucking Joe Rogan. Watch. Just you watch. Just you watch. Just you watch. Not your choice, though. Oopsie. Rest in peace. Suppose you were born into immense wealth, but on the outside you look like a disgusting cringe slob oh. who nobody respects. Oh, that's bad. Would you cope with the rejection of the world by convincing yourself you are actually better than everyone else because you've got that lovely trust fund? A wonderful fund. And if you finally manage to build up the admiration of the public, oh, la, la. would you sabotage your own success by hanging on to that old cope? and eventually being exposed as a toxic person and losing it all. Fuck! Rest in peace. Just another oops. <laughs> right? Yeah. If, for example, a boy was denied love and affect- Fuck, you know, look at Rogan. Rogan used to be a dimey, 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 innit? All that HGH definitely has adverse of- Like, I guess HGH is like a- It's like a- It's like a- You know, pros and cons. You take HGH and you take other steroids and most likely you're going to be ripped until the age of like 60, 70 plus, right? But unfortunately, the cons are your face is going to morph into like a thumb as Joe looks now, right? Where his head kind of morphs into his neck. It's all kind of one thing. But you get to look really ripped. So that's the issue. Like, what do you want? Do you want to be ripped or do you want to have a cute face? as a child and instead received frequent allegations of homosexuality from his violent father no, no, he's sweet and he's got sugar in his would that lead him to a lifetime of trying to reconcile his manhood unhinged addiction <laughs> to extreme exercise hormone replacement therapy becoming a male to male trans man desperate for the external validation of other men <laughs> I really should have bought those steaks only to transform his own body into a grotesque monster and he knows that he can't be a coach. And becoming an icon to a legion of unfuckable losers, even more desperate for. Imagine getting a tattoo of. Honestly, some of these. I, I don't think I've ever loved another man that much to get a tattoo of them. Even me growing up being a fucking Michael Jackson fan and loving him, the early nerd NERD Pharrell era, I love that. 
um, Morrissey, the Smiths era. I can think of loads of bands, Slayer, when I was really into Slayer back in the day when I was growing up and shit, my Slipknot phase I had. There's been plenty of people who I could have probably got a tattoo of and it would have made sense when I was young, but I can't do it. I can't put my, I can't just go through with it. So imagine being a grown ass man and getting a tattoo of fucking Rogan on your body. Like you have to be a, such a big redact, like, you know, like imagine what, but then I guess it's worth the, it's worth the pain. It's worth the embarrassment because Rogan will tag you and post your picture on his Instagram. Right. So, you know, Father figure than he is. What's sadder when you run into a guy you used to do comedy? Like you don't do comedy anymore. Uh, run into guys and like dude, you don't do comedy no, anymore. Producer now or no? Dude, I'm just like coming. Yeah, I'm not quitting. I just, I just. You don't do comedy no, anymore. Producer now. I'm not going to Toronto. I'm not going to. You don't do comedy really anymore. Sad. Especially if they had at least one good set. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. No, I'm not going to the East Coast. Could have figure. Or maybe even a special or two. Yeah. This is a long <laughs> life we got. We're gonna do this forever. <laughs> I've said next week. Jim, did you ever hear me say I quit comedy? No. 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 I just juggle a million things. What you know? happened? Wait, what are you guys? Oh my god. I lost. Oh my you gotta you gotta love you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Big up Elephant Graveyard, absolute legend. That was actually incredible. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. Big up everybody tuning in. Appreciate all of you. <laughs> Young old vibes. Yeah, right. Never in a million years a fucking tattoo of Tremaine. Who do, who, who do you think I am? Who do you think I am, huh? Who do you take me for? Come on, man. Give me some respect. Um, Let's move on. Next on the list. Next on the list. Let's watch this video courtesy of Danny from The Stop. Big up Danny from The Stop, one of my favorite YouTube channels out there at the moment that does great work covering all the Joe Budden um, podcast drama and stuff. This is an interesting video. It's titled Mandy and Bridget End Podcast After Do Expires. Mandy and Bridget were part of the Joe Budden Network with their podcast called See The Thing Is. They left Joe Budden's network to do their own thing. They got a big deal, but now they're ending their podcast because there's no more money in it. You see, some of these podcasters out here, they're only in it for the money. It's the grift. It's the grift of advertising. And as long as the advertising dollars stop coming in, they will jump off podcasting quicker than you can say, hi, caramba. So these two ladies have stopped podcasting. They're not going to be missed because their podcast was fucking terrible and they had the worst takes in the world. And... This might be karma for them siding with Joe Budden when he was accused of sexually harassing Olivia Dope back in the day. So, let's play the video. Big up Danny for the stop. Did Mandy and Bridget end their podcast because they couldn't find another deal? That's right, y'all. Bridget and Mandy just ended their podcast. And while their initial statement... I need some, hints I need some fucking Colombian teeth, don't I? I need some, I know I said I don't, won't get it. I want to get Invisalign, but I need some Colombian teeth. It could have. Look at those teeth. Look how pearly white they are. They just stick out there. I need some fucking Hollywood teeth. I need some, I need some fucking Tijuana teeth. That's what I need. I need some Turkish chompers. So I can start like podcasting a lot like, hi, hi guys. Hi, it's me. And just them choosing not to continue the podcast. Y'all can listen tomorrow for the official look how white they are the teeth are even white in a t-shirt the teeth match the fucking tight you know the text font color fuck you know that's what i need statement um but we are ending see the thing is podcast oh that lisp though that lisp Woohoo! that's the only reason why i wouldn't get that that fucking lisp is a major one more one more you guys can we are ending see the thing is podcast let's go back again that lisp is crazy y'all can listen tomorrow for the official statement statement um, um but that we are ending see the thing is podcast. podcast jesus that lisp is uh, crazy i think it's pretty obvious that what happened here was that their deal was up and they could not find another offer to continue the see what i mean about these podcasters especially this type of breed of people they're not in it for the banter they're not in it for the love they're not in it for the lows they're not in it for the lmaos not in it for the ha ha he he's they're only in it for the money which is no surprise that when they do get ads they fucking litter the whole pod full of fucking ads one after the other because guess what it's a cash grab they don't enjoy it 
They don't even enjoy talking to the fans. They don't enjoy talking to the viewers. They don't enjoy shooting the shit. To them, if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. And as soon as it doesn't make money, they jump ship. Pretty deplorable, to be honest. Podcast. If you don't remember, back in 2022, See The Thing Is signed a seven-figure deal with Gumball. How did they even... The fact that they even got a seven-figure deal shows you that there's some... Finag there's probably a little bit, which is understandable. I'm not going to lie. I understand why people do it because if I was desperate enough, I would probably do it too. I'm not that desperate, so I don't. And also, eh, you know, I'd rather the long game, right? But there is probably a little hustle going on in podcasting where if you fudge your numbers, it's probably a little hustle. You fudge your numbers, so you make it look like your podcast is more popular than what it is. You use those numbers to then leverage yourself to get a good deal. You get that good deal, you get the money, you bank it, and that money that money gives you runway for the next couple of years. Seven-figure deal, you divvy it out, you maybe give yourself a salary of like 30k a year or something. Yeah, you know I mean that keeps your keep it keeps your lights on in your house and shit, maybe pays your mortgage, and then you have other businesses going on, on the side. But unfortunately, because the deal was based on numbers that aren't real. When they get the report back or when they look at the numbers and they kind of assess, okay, which podcast are we sponsor, who's performing, who's not performing well, they will clearly see that your pod isn't matching the numbers that you spoke about prior. So even though you hustle them out of that initial seven figures, you can't hustle them again. So it's a bit of a one hit and done scam. It works as a scam, but it's a one hit and done. As soon as you prove you can't meet the numbers that you said you could, they like, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to go somewhere else. Now, to be fair, it's all one big scam because I think the podcasting companies, having worked in marketing myself, having done a lot of paid marketing campaigns myself, I know that companies just, you know, they, they have marketing money. They have spend a budget, basically. They have to spend. doesn't matter how they spend it. They have to spend it. And usually um, that sort of budget spend if you're smart and you're a marketing executive, you can use it to obviously leverage your own career and get yourself another fucking promotion. So maybe somebody signed you on for that podcasting deal um, in the you know under the illusion that you're going to help them get a promotion. You also get the bag, but then they also get to spend the money from the company that was already allocated to marketing anyway. So everyone's kind of winning. It's a weird thing to explain. I don't sure if I explained it well, but everybody kind of wins. It's just at the end. The person that loses, well, everybody wins in the interim, but then towards the end, the person that loses is a podcaster because they find out the numbers don't match. It seems like Gumball is some type of advertising agency and a place where you could sign up and have an ad read on one of the podcasts that they have attached to their advertising network. And I think it's interesting because... They look good there, though, don't they? They look fucking good. Look how white they look. Look at that. I need some chompers. I need I need some LA chompers. I need some LA fucking chompers. Yo, big up my guy Wingus McDingus. Big up Warren Kenner. Uh, big up Jared Mellerick, my guy. Young old vibes, my G. Hope you're good. Tetris Effect, Theodore, Red Chem. I see you. Reza, I see you. Snoo, I see you. Tommy, get the bag. I see you. Bang your doors. Bang your fucking doors. This represents a big deal for podcasting and represents how hard it can be to go independent as a podcaster. You basically saw See The Thing Is Fold with the possibility of them no longer being able to secure another deal. Now, as to the messiness of this whole thing, I truly believe there will be more to come. And while Bridget and Mandy are presenting as if it was a mutual joint decision, I would assume there was one person who initiated this breakup, and my guess would be Mandy, as she has a lot of things going on for her. She has her podcast studio, which I'm sure generates a lot of revenue. She has horrible decisions, and I assume at some point she will be launching her own podcast and doesn't really need to see the thing is if it's not generating income and going the indie route. I disagree with that one. I don't think... Just because it's, I, I think most, the, the main reason why they stopped the podcast because they don't have any money. Sorry, because it's not generating any money. I don't think if it was generate even a small amount, they stop it. Because why wouldn't you, why why not take the extra bit of money? You know what I mean? It's all adds to the pot. If she's got all those different businesses going on, plus you have to see the thing is, you know, making you a nice little 5K a month, 10K a month. Why wouldn't you do it? 
it's 5k 10k a month that you wouldn't have earned before anyway like why would you leave that money on the table they're only quitting it now because there's no deal on the table and they you know it's probably not worth their hassle to try and get money from adsense and stuff especially when you know that money is a bit inconsistent and all over the place and it's harder to kind of build an audience off of that sort of stuff so i understand why they're doing it but i think the idea that they would you know because she's got so much on she's so busy nah i think that's a lie but let me know what you think in the comments is see the thing is ending just because of irreconcilable differences or did they know that hey there's no money coming anytime soon and it's time to fold it up and pack it in. Now, this is a pretty sad ending for See The Thing Is. Not really. As the show has faced w countless controversies ever since it aligned with the they Joe won't Budden be Network. They won't be missed. Remember the whole Olivia Dope situation? She was one of the beloved co-hosts of the podcast but had to leave after the situation with Joe Budden. But let's not forget that even though she left because of Joe Budden, she didn't get along with Bridget and Mandy. To be fair, I think that is a bit of karma. Personally, I think it's a bit of karma. I know it isn't, but I would like to think it's karma. Because those girls, when they sided with fucking Budden, and, and that, I was like, what? Especially because they were all like, you know, out here preaching that they were about women, empowerment, all this sort of nonsense. Then Olivia Dope gets into a weird situation with Joe Budden. Maybe it got blown out of proportion, maybe. But still, her feelings should be fucking, you know, valid and should be warranted. She felt as if she was violated. She felt as if it was inappropriate what Joe Budden did, kind of hugging her and kind of gyrating on her and stuff. It was basically deemed to be sexual harassment. And now that we... Since some time has passed, Rory from Rory and Moore's podcast um, kind of revealed that Joe Budden kind of settled out of court. He kind of had to write her a check, essentially, to stop it from becoming a big thing. And I'm assuming she probably had to sign an NDA as well. Hence why she hasn't spoken about it. But it was clearly a big enough situation that it would go down the lawsuit flipping route. Those girls decided to fucking side with Joe Budden. And it's like, huh? And in the end, they ended up falling out of him anyway. So it's like, what a fucking shit situation. So most likely, I would like to believe that it was a, you know, karmic retribution. But obviously, we all know karma doesn't exist. So it's probably just a business thing. It didn't make enough money. Um, it's not making enough money now with no fucking deal. No deal on the table. Let's fucking end it. But big up Olivia Dope. Joe Budden, she didn't get along with Bridget and Mandy if we really want to do the science. Now the show ends after just a couple years. And... It will largely likely be forgotten because, exactly. hey, there's so many podcasts that come and go. And it was terrible, but too. But we have to remember that it might have been the most successful thing the Joe Budden podcast created outside of the Joe Budden. <laughs> Look, he's special. I still don't understand why Joe felt it was a good idea to have his first show on his network launch be a show with women. Especially that, like, I, I didn't understand that. Like, that was such a weird first show to go with. But I guess he was trying to rewrite the narrative around himself being an abuser, about that story of him sitting on some woman's stomach. Like, you know, there's all these allegations around Budden's name. So I guess in an effort to kind of get ahead of the story, rewrite the narrative, he tried to, you know, say, hey, I'm the fucking supporter, ally of women. I'm going to have this woman show. And then it kind of all imploded because, you know, they all didn't get along. Maybe there was some jealousy going on there. Who knows? And it kind of went the way it went. Podcast. It actually stuck around for a bit, even after it left the Joe Budden Network. And for that, you must commend Bridget and Mandy. But let me know what you think in the comments. Will you miss see the thing is? Nope. Or is it just another podcast? What miss it? Don't that care. Fell apart because the business was no longer profitable. I also think this is a indication of the future of other podcasts to come. I agree with that. Like I don't think Bridget and Mandy are the only people who are going to have to deal with this. Joe Budden has been hinting towards a lot of podcasts ending real soon, and this is exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about market conditions impacting the abilities of podcasts to simply exist because no shot at Rory and Maul, but they're independent too now, right? They don't have a deal in place, at least it would seem. So the difference with them is that they actually have views. I know people are going to say their views are in the, like really bad, but they're actually not bad. They generate some level of income and they have the live show, merch, and they have a really loyal fan base that's way bigger than See The Thing Is. So, You know what I think? 
I don't think it's over for podcasts, like Seven Dirty said. I think the issue is that you should probably take the bag. Like, for instance, like if you built a big enough of a community, no, if you built a legit community and a fan base around what you do, and somebody offers you a bag, take it. Because you know, even when that deal expires, you're still going to have your fans that you had beforehand. But I think if you take the bag with no fans, that's when the issue starts. It's almost similar to like a recording artist, like a, like an artist, like a singer, a rapper and stuff, who doesn't have a fan base, but then gets put on, you know, via a label. But then, you know, once the label stops inventing money in you, you've got no fan base to kind of go back to. And you have to start from basically ground zero. So I think it's better to get the, I think it's better to build your audience, build your fan base, build your viewership organically, do it the fucking hard slog way, one viewer, one listener after another. Then when you get to a point where somebody offers you the bag, take the bag, obviously, because the money up front is good, especially if it's like six, seven figures plus and stuff. Of course, take the fucking money. But then don't expect that money to last forever. Always kind of, you know, go back to sort of like going back to your base sort of thing. Similar to what academics did. Academics had that deal with Spotify. He might have fucked it up because of the drama with his girl, who knows. But the deal expired. But he got a big bag out of it. He got big more exposure. Then he just went back to streaming. Like, you know, the same thing he was doing beforehand. So I think that's the basically the way to kind of go about things. But what you're seeing with a lot of these guys, which is quite transparent, is that they only do it for the money. So when the money's gone, when that bag is gone, the motivation to record, to talk about current events, to give your hot takes, to upload, to edit, to clip, all this stuff, it completely dissipates because there's no money in it. I understand that, to be fair, but I think if you're in it for the love, for the realness of fucking just sitting here ranting into a webcam like I am, then you'll just do it for nothing. You know I mean? Do it for shits and giggles because why not? might be in a better spot but they're not the only ones i'm thinking about people like poor minds i'm thinking about all of these folks that have to execute a podcast with no deal in place all right y'all that's my video for today maybe it's a good thing though to be fair maybe it's a good thing all in um maybe it's a good thing because i think there's too many podcasts even for myself being a podcast listener being a podcast creator there's just too many podcasts out there man there's just too much to listen to, too much stuff. So maybe it's, it's better for us, the listener, and us, the content creators, that there's a less, there's more room now. It's less crowded. And I think as a listener, there's less pods available. So you get to, so the ones that are left over are the ones that people, are the ones that are actually good because they're still getting paid, they're still getting a bag, and the ones that are actually still doing it for the love of it. That's probably the right way to go about it. I think so, um, all in all. So, you know, um, what do you call it? Safe travels to those two girls. Um, again, for me, I want to believe it's comment retribution for Olivia Dope because I feel like the way exactly Young Old Vibes, the way they did Olivia Dope was so disgusting. Um, the way they sided with Joe Budden and kind of gaslight her into not into into you know thinking that she kind of brought it upon herself and she was making a meal out of nothing it was gross. Especially when they were championing the whole like yeah we agree with women we are women empowerment type of thing. And then you know at the first sort of instance the first scenario where you kind of get to put that shit in action they completely failed. So um, love and solidarity to Olivia Dope. Unfortunate way to end the show for see the thing is but they won't be missed. They won't be blood clot mist i'll tell you that much for free i'll tell you that much for free moving on moving on let's go for some clips what are you guys saying actually let me go to stream chat what are you guys saying stream chat i haven't been in touch with you more 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 be able to decline on rogan and shit yep 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 now rogan will be fine i think rogan's never gonna decline i think he'll be fine he's definitely in it for the love obviously the money's good but he also does it because you know he he loves fucking podcasting you don't talk that much every other day just for the money. You know what I mean? He, he fucking loves it for real. Um, and also, even if the money from Spotify goes away, he still makes probably 50 mil a year from that podcast alone or just on AdSense. So imagine the fucking advertising and shit. Rogan is fine. He's never going anywhere, to be fair. Um, big up AZ, chatting, live streaming, pushing podcasts out. Live streaming, live streaming. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right because I think I listen to, you know what, nowadays, you might be right there, Ruben Rivera, because I think I listen to way more live streams than I do listen to podcasts now. I'm not going to lie. I think I actually use my phone to watch live streams way more than I listen to an actual podcast. Kind of wild, you know, kind of wild. 
And to be honest, the live stream I listen to or I watch in the background or whatever, they're just random things. Sometimes I'll just go on YouTube, I'll click the live tab and whatever's live that looks interesting, I'll just listen to it. Whether it's fucking Tim Pool, whether it's some random YouTuber who I haven't checked out, whoever it is. Yeah, you know I mean, whoever it fucking is, I'll just whether it's my guy King Sly, whoever, I'll just fucking tune in, just check it out for the sake of it. So maybe in terms of you know listening, listenership and shit throughout the year or throughout the week, basically, my kind of consumption is steering more towards live streaming, which may be the reason why live streams are fucking popping off. You know what I mean? Um, Real talk, AZ, big up Honky Tonk, Tennessee, appreciate you, my G. Um, ba -ba -da -ba. B up case of Moses was good. Hope you're well, my friend. Black Effect Pod Network is next. 90% of their podcasts are trash. You know what? I don't even know what's on their network. I swear to God. I have no idea what's on there. I've not, I don't think I've listened to a single one on there. Oh, no. I think I listened to the... Is it the 81 and South show? Are those... Is that, that's on there, right? Black Effect. Let's check, let's check the website. I don't even know what's on Black Effect. I really don't know. That's... um, What's his name? That's um, Charlemagne the God's podcast network. What's he got in here? He's got big facts. I've never listened to... Oh, that's that's the guy from Atlanta. I've seen video clips of it, but I've never watched a full show. Um, Deeply Well, I don't know who that is. The Moment, I don't know who that is. The Professional Home Girl, who's that? I don't know who Ebony is. Yeah, so I've watched 85 and South, but I've seen video clips of them. I don't listen to the podcast. I've seen clips of All The Smoke. That's a good, that's a good show. Um, I've seen clips of The Big Fact Show. I've seen clips of Drink Chance, but I don't listen to the whole thing because those guys are some of the most, you know, horriblest podcasters, content creators on the face of the earth. It's horrendous. All the interruptions and stuff, all the fucking, you know, the fucking clapping and the, yeah, I can't do it. Um, Earn Your Leisure, I've, again, YouTube channel. I check, I've, I've seen their videos pop up on my feed, but I haven't checked their podcasts out. Hell of a Week, no, really. Gangster Chronicles, not really. Hello, somebody. Not really. None. Yeah, none of these shows I've 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 listened to. None. Oh shit! I didn't know Michael Blackson had a podcast. I had no idea about that. R and B Money. <laughs> There's a podcast called R and B Money. Lows. Like what? Okay, cool. Um, we've got one called Naked with Carrie Champion. No ceilings. I don't know who that is. Look at the fucking artwork. The graphics for it. No ceilings on the uh, yuck. Street politicians, no. Yeah, I've not listened to any of these things. Zero. Horrible decisions. I don't come on. We'll listen to that shit. Maybe the only one I, I heard of that does well is horrible decisions because I've seen people share clips of that a lot. So maybe horrible decisions. Um, obviously, um, drink champs, and then eighty five and south and all the smoke. They might be the most popular shows on there. So they've got probably five shows on there that are probably pulling in all the numbers. I would assume so. And who, who's this woman here? Moment with who? Sarah Jake Roberts. I don't know who the fuck that is. But yeah, crazy, isn't it? I've literally never heard of any of these shows. Wow. But yeah, big up them. Big up Case of Moses. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's get in some clips. Um, there's a clip here. Just discovered this old audio only. Audio only. Audio is king. Rinks interview with Ronda Rousey. Also heavily features Mushmouth with redacted interruptions. It's when they were dating. It's a train wreck. Lopez. Wow. So honestly, Brian Callen might have the record for the most started or launched and failed podcast out there. He's had so many fucking podcasts, so many channels, so many content ideas that he never really follows through on. That's why for all the, you know, for all the negatives of Brendan Shaw, which he has a lot of, one thing you have to give that guy credit for is his ability to just follow through and see things out. Without Brendan, Brian would be 100% relying on his dad for money. 100%. Because he's so inconsistent, he's so unreliable when it comes to content. Even though he started making content, he started podcasting around the same time Rogan did. The same type, sort of era. So really, he should have his own show. The Brian Callen Show that does crazy numbers, that gets mad ads. You know what I mean? That, that, that just does well for himself. But because of all the inconsistencies and up and downs, and maybe some of the rape allegations, he's where he's at now, having to rely on the fucking salary from Brendan Shaw. Which is the weird thing about the whole situation. But let's play his clip. I've seen I think that and if anyone says that GSP would beat him, they're an idiot. Yeah, well, well he's then, well then I'm an idiot because you're an idiot. Yeah, because then, then I'm an idiot because they would build <laughs> it. As... 
<laughs> I bet Callum was loving it, innit? I bet Callum was loving being in a room with Brendan and Ronda Rousey, right? The fucking ultimate cuck. He was just there in the corner, like, picturing them fucking, asking them if they could fuck in front of him. Like, he must have been loving every minute of it, man. Just looking at them both like, oh my God, athletes, big bodies. <laughs> But yeah, the Brian Callen show, another failed, um, you know, starting another failed podcast and idea from the one and only Callon. Let's continue. Another clip here says, anyone getting concerned? Let's play this one. That's for the energy that it's like it's I, like it's like you're the you're in the app. It's like you're almost like yet. That's for what the fuck? One more, one more, one more, one more, one more, one more. One more, one more. What the fuck was that? Was that a fucking malfunction? That's for the energy that it's like it's I, like it's like you're the you're in the app. It's like you're almost like yet uh, that's for the energy that it's like it's I, like it's like you're the you're in the app. It's like you're almost like yet. Uh, wow, wow. Is that CTE or is that just redactedness? What do you think in the stream chat? Let me know in the stream chat. Is that CTE or is he just regarded? Let me know. CTE or regarded because that was fucking wild. It, it's that, 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 it's that. Let's go one more time. One more time. It's that, it's that. The energy that it's like, it's like, it's like, you're in the app. It's like you're almost like, yeah. It's almost like you're in a but CTE, people are saying. Good morning, Dallas. Big up, NJ Ranger. What's good, my G? Hope you're well. It sounds like when you press your ears really fast as a kid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One more time. It's that. It's that. It's that. It's that. It's that. The energy that it's like. It's like. It's like. It's like you're. You're in the. It's like you're almost like yeah. The energy that it's like. It's like. It's like you're. You're in the app. It's like you're almost like yeah. Bloody hell, mate. Prayers to Brendan Shaw. Get well soon, my friend. Get well soon. Continuing on. Continuing on. Continuing on. Let's play some clips from stuff that I clipped myself with my bare fucking hands, right? Let's play this one. Let's play this one. So, this is a funny one. This is a funny one, right? This Brendan Schaub's mint. Sorry, let's do. Uh, no, let's do that one. Let's do. Let's just go from order. Let's do Brendan and Brian review of T Fat K Live. As most of you guys know, if you've seen the clip on my channel and you haven't already, make sure you check it out. I uploaded a clip which is the T Fat K Live review thing, um, where they speak about it. No, it's a T Fat K review where somebody that somebody from the T Fat K subreddit actually. Now I'm getting fucking regarded, you know. Um, as well as Brendan, someone from the T5K subreddit went to go and watch um, T5K live and they made a review about the experience. And, you know, fair to say it was pretty depressing. So we've now got Brendan and Brian giving their review of their experience at the Vulcan, aka the stepmothership, the joke that Brendan's fucking kicked into the ground. So let's see what he has to say regarding, regarding the T Fat K live. I'm curious to see what he said about it and if he liked it, if he didn't like it. Blah de blah blah blah. Let's find out. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, the birds in Austin, yep. Texas. Yep, we had a good time. We had a we had a dinner. We had a power dinner, a power steak dinner with Tim Kennedy, uh, Chris Williamson. Uh, I love that guy. Uh, fucking. So Chris Williamson, the guy that was on Rogan recently, did he move? Has he moved to Austin or something? So Chris Williamson was there, Tim Kennedy was there, but Rogan couldn't find time to hang out with him. It's so bizarre, isn't it? Imagine being those two guys. One of them in Brian Callum being one of Rogan's best friends, aka best friend, right? But he's known him for twenty plus years. Brendan being one of the guys that's had the most solo appearances on the JRE even till this date his numbers are like the high 80s or something in terms of appearances on the JRE and you go to Austin Texas which has now become Rogan's new home right he's basically his state now he's new fucking city of residence right he's known as the mayor around those parts you don't go to the comedy mothership you don't get to hang out with him 
You don't even go to hang out at the, at the comedy mothership. You don't even see him. You don't come to eat with you. It's almost like you go there and he's not there. Like, what the fuck is going on, man? What the fuck is going on? In uh, Zach. But Zach. then, sorry, but then a former, a guest, a recent guest is there. And also somebody that's associated with Rogan is there as well. That's a bit weird. Zach Tellender, he's got a big YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and then, and then yourself. We just had a laugh. It was just a laugh. Laugh, little steak. Yeah. How about those guys all talking about how much they work out, though? I'm like, the, you guys work out too much. It's too much. They're talk to, talking about Tim. lactic acid threshold. Yeah, too much. I was well, they staring were, at the ceiling. They were talking about uh, um, all of them had worked out with Lance Armstrong. And how he's a freak. Yeah, like like his ability. To, he can he can go full out for a half hour. Even more so. Like it's you're so you're weird. full out compared to his. The, the RPMs he can hit. Yeah. Is he's at 500 nonsense. watts. I don't know what that is. Imagine being at a dinner with some of your friends. Nearest and dearest wanting to shoot the shit. And they just start talking about working out, burpees, fucking kettlebell swings, you know, fucking jerk. It's like, come on, bro. Give it a rest, man. But I guess they must enjoy it, you know? I don't know. Maybe because I'm somebody that, I don't know. I just don't, talking about it over dinner, really? That means, For 30 like... minutes, <laughs> which is never, it, it, it never, no one ever it's, that. Yeah, just a genetic freak. Um, no, but we that did was the fun. show in Austin. That was great to be up on stage, bro. I know we you? haven't done a live fire in the kid yeah. in a hot second. And real like fans, like real hardcore, hardcore fans, have been watching us forever. Deep dive. What did you expect? Who's gonna turn up to a T Fat K live show apart from hardcore fans? But that's the thing, though. They don't really appreciate their fans. They should do way more for their fans, like T Fat K Live, like other bits and bobs, maybe tour and go to like some states where they're popular and shit, and actually go and touch the fans because you know they get a lot of hate from people like myself and others but they still have a pretty decent fan base that pays their bills they should probably go in like you know shake some hands and kiss some babies and thank them for their continued support despite all the redactedness despite all the controversies despite all the fucking horrible attitudes and bad decisions all these type of things those guys are still stuck by them they should go and kind of thank them but again you know they don't really fuck with their fans like that to be honest I have questions. Yep, a SWAT guy. A SWAT guy came up. He's like, oh, I'm SWAT. You know, I'm here oh, with my- Oh, SWAT guy. SWAT guy. Why don't you mention somebody else? Why don't you mention the regular, the builder? Why don't you mention the cleaner? Why don't you mention just the regular Tom, you know, the regular Tom, Dick, and Harry? Nah. If the person's SWAT, if they're a former Navy SEAL, if, they're, if, they, if they were served in the army, suddenly they have more value. Then they start jacking them off. Oh, I used to fight. It's like, come on, man. These guys, man. Bloody hell. I'm SWAT. Yeah, right. My wife, and it was just like Texas, man. It was just Texas. I loved it. It was fun. We'll and I felt it. like we were really, we were really jiving. I, an hour and 15 minutes, I didn't even jiving. realize what happened. Me neither. When we got stage, like, how long did we go? I'm like, hour 15? Like, holy. I, I know. I thought it was only 30 minutes. Yeah. It was crazy. And we'll post it live for you guys who couldn't. I mean, we'll post the live show for you guys. <laughs> we're going to post it live. <laughs> you got to love it. We're going to do that, what, Wednesday? Uh, yeah. It'll come out Thursday morning. Come out Thursday, Thursday morning. morning. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It was great to be on top of your business. It was so much fun. We'll do a red and see there once a month. Once red and see. Red and see. Once again. Red and see. Yeah. Just get big up the red and see gang. Red and see. Right. Red, like I said before, red, red and see will be a good name for a surf and turf. Red and see. Get it? Red meat see is the. That'd be a good name for a fucking surf and turf. Red and see. There once a month. Once a month. And I do a red and see there once a month. Once a month. And red and see there once a month. Once a month. I do a red and see there once a month. I do a red and see there once a month. I do a red and see there once a month. I do a red and see there once a month. I do a red and see there once a month. Once a month. I do a red and see there there once a month. Once a month. Red and see lineup guests. I don't. But I. You know. I feel like guests. Are good, but I I kind of enjoyed that with us for a while. That that one has scheduled a guest in uh, Gordon Ryan. Yeah, we wasn't knew feeling we knew it well. was gonna be dicey. He was like, yeah. "Man, my stomach. If it's good, day of." He's like, "I think I'm good." Then two hours before the show, he's like, "I am not good." Yeah, he's Gordon Ryan's a weird booking for them anyway. Probably a good thing that he didn't go. What what does Gordon Ryan have to do with T Fat K? How many times has he been on the show? Twice, if that. It's a weird booking anyway. It's very very strange that. They went to book Gordon Ryan as a special guest. In the end, in the end, Clint was a special guest, aka Chin, aka Chin Su Yi. 
he was a special guest in the end, right? So all of that build up, all that hype, all of that, all of that kind of, um, all of those, you know, all of those innuendos, all of those heavy suggestions about Rogan maybe stepping out and being a special guest and end up being fucking good old chin in his short shorts and his little t-shirt, right? And his little face. That was, it was on stage. I would have wanted him to sing, actually. I would have loved to have seen him sing because that would have gone down like a fucking house on fire. But he didn't sing. Chin was just there on stage, standing there awkwardly. And the show was the show. So um, it's good to hear that they're going to do it more often. Again, I'm not a fan of the show at all. I think the podcast is terrible now. I used to be a fan of it in the past, but it's obviously fallen off the fucking cliff. But I've always said, I think they should do more TFAT K shows live anyway. Whether it's like stand up or whether it's just straight podcast, they should do more shows like that because they'd get a far better, they'd get a far bigger turnout um, than they would just do their own pod, their own fucking comedy shows, personally. I think they should probably even go on tour together and do comedy. But, you know, stand up comedians are a bit greedy when it comes to um, touring, when it comes to ticket sales and shit. They want to keep all the money for themselves, understandably. Um, but I think if they would if that would be a better way to kind of maximize exposure by going on tour together and doing like the, you know, the big brown and rink show, whatever you call it, do some stand up around the country and go around from there. Pick up Austin Casey. What's good? Rogan offering a residency to Joey really sparked something in that redact's brain. Bopa can't let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Very, very good point. Cause I never, I would love to, if my computer wasn't slow, I would definitely check out the Fire and the Kids search engine and go through and see when, how often Brendan mentioned the term or the word residency. Resi sorry, residency. I can't even say it properly because of him. But I, I would love to mention, I would love to see. I bet you there's a sharp, there's like a sharp fucking increase in the times that he's mentioned residency um, when Rogan obviously dropped that fucking little bit of info onto fucking Joey Diaz, which is absolutely hilarious, right? Absolutely hilarious that he offered Joey Diaz that in front of Rogue, in front of Brendan and made it clear that he was only offering it to fucking Joey, not to him. You know what I mean? Let me just see if I can get this up, actually. Let's see if I can get this up. But that was a fucking great little clip. Let me see if I can get this up on here. Please bear with me a second. Ba, 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 ba. Let's see if I can get this up on here. Because I think that was a really funny clip of Rogan saying to him, Hey, do you want to be, do you want to rent here at the comedy mothership? Maybe come up here a few times and then Brent had to just sit there we, oddly and just kind of be quiet without, you know, without trying to invite himself. Let's see if I can get, let's see, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Bear with me a second, my friends. Apologies for the fucking interruption. Let's fucking go. Oh, I can't see it here. There's some. There's one clip. I don't think this is the right one. Yeah, there, there we go. There we go. I think this might be the one. I think this might be the one. I've got two. I think this might be the one. Let's see. I've got two here. Two candidates at the moment. Let's see. If this is the one. Try, try it. Try it once, come in for a few days, yeah, this is the one. come back a couple months later, and then we start picking it up. Start looking once at houses. Month, start looking at places. <laughs> apartments. A little place nearby. This is and a, you know what? Just a little studio. A studio. That's this is a, a nice apartment. No big deal. You get nice apartments. No big deal. There's a bunch of beautiful apartment complexes of walking Com distance away. Okay. Complex. <laughs> Hinchcliffe's got an amazing place. See, Hinch Hinch <laughs> Rogan is so out of order, man. Sitting there and like talking about Austin and about the comedy club and the accommodation while Brendan is sitting right next to him onto his left. He's right there. And you know he's desperate to get an invite to perform on the stage at the comedy mothership. He's desperate to get involved. He's just like, he's sitting right there. Come on, Rogan, man. Throw the guy a bone, man. Give R Brendan a bone. All right. Try it once, come in for a few days, yeah, come back good. a couple months later, and then we start picking it up. Start looking once at houses. Month, start looking at places. <laughs> apartments. A little place nearby. This is and a, you know what? Just a little studio. A studio. This is a little, nice apartment. No you deal. get nice apartments. No There's a bunch of beautiful apartment complexes of walking Com distance away. Okay. Complex. <laughs> oh, look at him trying to smile. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. 
I feel so bad for him, man. Rogan is so out of order. How can you let him perform at the comedy store with you on those, you know, Rogan and Friends show? And then as soon as you move to Austin, you have standards. Now all of a sudden, you can't hang around with him anymore. You can't endorse his comedy. Like, come on, man. Give the guy a bone, man. Come on, man. Justice for Brendan. Justice for fucking Brendan. Justice for Shorb. Justice for Papa. Justice for CTE. Justice for Big Brown. Justice for the redact in charge. One more. Yeah. We brought the king of New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen. It's the we, best we, yet. We, we've been trying to get him to move here for three years. Keep everything. telling me to go fuck myself. You never know. You, <laughs> you never, never know. know. Listen, I'll buy you a house. I you know. You tell bro. me what you tell me. Jesus bro, you know Christ. I love you at all, my heart. I know. I love you too. If we can get you out here, what if Rogan would offer Brendan that opportunity and say, "Hey, I'll buy you a house," Brendan would take it, like snatch it off his hands. I don't know about you guys. If you've ever had rich friends, I've maybe had one person in my life i don't even call him a friend but one person i knew in the past who had money and one thing you should do when you have people in your life who have money you don't exploit them you don't take everything they offer you even if you need it sometimes it's good to offer somebody as money something so that you can show them that hey even though it's nice that you invite me to sort things i actually like you as a person i like hanging out with you as a friend right and that's how you actually get to solidify a relationship with somebody who has money you don't always fucking take 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 but ben is the kind of person who yeah of course i'm gonna take it you're rich so like, bro like have some you gotta have some decorum have some tact you gotta play a bit cool you know what i mean so, so when rogan offers because he can buy it to, for you if he wants to buying a house room is probably like buying a fucking car but you don't you don't take it you like say hey man i, I can't you know I appreciate the offer, bro, but, you know, I can't accept that. You've done a lot for me already. You gave me a fucking comedy career. You basically gave me a podcast career also. I can't do that. I can't. But Brendan would definitely have taken that offer. Definitely have taken it. So big up Joey Diaz for having some level of decorum and act like he's been there before. Whatever I, I need to do. down here and do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday residency. That's all I want for Done. You. Yeah. That's it. Done. That's it. Hey, bro, Joey, Joey. That's it. You got yourself a nice little midweek deal, right? Do a little fucking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Fly back home to New Jersey to see his family for the weekend. Come back again. That's a great way to do a residency, to be fair. I'm not going to lie. Personally, the only, res the only residency I want, the only residency I want is fucking Bergheim. Me and fucking Bergheim, bi-monthly, right? Pop in, do a little shuffle, play some tunes, pop back out again. That's the way to go. But a residency at the Vulcan. At the Vulcan. Come on, bro. We'll give you Tuesday, Wednesday, That's and how Thursday. You start. Let's you go. Don't... You'll see in my comments or maybe in yours on Red, like, oh, why aren't you playing the mothership, Brendan? I don't deserve to be there. I... <laughs> <laughs> you don't deserve to be there, bro. Some could say, some would argue, some would suggest you don't even deserve the career you have. You know? But fuck it, you're there anyway. Act like you've been there before. Play up to the fucking role. That's why I don't like about this sort of shit. Because this, this sort of stuff is a way for him to kind of like get sympathy from people, right? No, don't try and curry sympathy. You faked it till you make it. You faked it till you make it. You got to this level. Now fucking show up. Don't at the first hurdle, at the first failure. Oh, I'm a, I don't deserve it. I'm a humble. Nah, fuck all that shit. You were talking like Billy Big Balls when you got that Showtime deal. You're letting your nuts hang. You're fucking, you know, doing the whole Conor McGregor walk, right? When you fucking were there next to fucking... Bre Yo, big up NJ Ranger. Appreciate ya. This stream is sponsored by Quentin Tarantino's Slow Ephraim starring Jesse Lee Peterson. <laughs> the inspirational story of a mentally challenged man who learns to hate. In theaters <laughs> August 15th. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Mentally challenged man who longs to hate. Yes, mentally challenged man that learns to hate. That is me. That is me. You've got me. You fucking rumbled me, NJ Ranger. Rumbled me once a fucking again, okay? Big up me. Big up my mentally challenged crew in the chat, right? Big up my guys that have to read a line in a book three or four times before they comprehend. Big up my guys that don't read fucking the letters and just go to the bottom to find out what's going on. Big up my guys 
who fucking get letters and fucking words mixed up because their brain doesn't work correctly. Big up my guys out there who can't dial numbers without looking at the paper two or three times, right? Big up my guys out there who can't bounce a basketball without looking down, right? Big up my guys out there who can't, who have to fucking underarm throw a fucking bit of rubbish into the bin because they don't have any good motor fucking skills in order to kind of throw it the normal way, right? Big up. Big up. I don't, I, 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 and me and Rogan have had this conversation. I'm not there yet. Man, once a month, do a residency. <laughs> Joey's like, yeah, man, why not? Brendan's like sitting there. How about me? How about me? Three one, days. Try it, try it once, come in for a few days. Yeah, that's what Come back doing. a couple months later, and then we start picking it up. What do you mean it's not me? Oh, it's not me. I got it completely wrong. Fuck. Fuck. I went on that whole rant. I fucking wasted all those words. I wasted all that fucking breath. I wasted all that saliva for nothing. Big up, MJ Ranger. Appreciate you. Start looking Once at months, houses. Start looking at places. <laughs> Apartments. A little place nearby. <laughs> I just think he got bummed out by LA and he just didn't want to do it anymore. Cheers, gentlemen. Yeah, right, I, probably, cheers. I probably should have followed him. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I probably should have followed him. Please invite me. Please invite me. <laughs> now I'm just depressed out there. Rogan turns away, doesn't offer him anything. <laughs> Come on, Rogan. Offer him something, you cunt. Come on, Rogan, man. Why is, why is he like this? He was okay to perform at a comedy store. He was okay to come with you at the Ice House. He was okay to perform with you at the Laugh Factory. Now you fucking go to fucking Austin and you're like, <laughs> cool story, bro. Yeah, you're like, come on, Rogan, man. Come on. Give Brendan a chance. Give Brendan a chance. Give Brendan a chance. Give Brendan a chance. T -t 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 give Brendan a chance. Give Brendan a chance. Come on. Whoops, the camera went. Whoopsie. I, I shouldn't beat the fucking table. The camera went. The camera went. Ah, too hype. Too much hype. Oh, shit. Am I still here? Can you still see me? Can you still see me? Please let me know. Can you still see me? The camera went. But I hope you can still see me. I hope you can. I hope you can. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> ah. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Am I here? No, I'm not here anymore. What's happened to the camera? My camera's not working anymore. anymore. Can you see me? Can you see me? I got too hyped there. I'm sorry. I got too hyped, okay? I apologize. I got too hype. I got too excited. But I should be back now. I should be back, right? I should be back. Oh, fucking hell, mate. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Lesson learned. Don't beat the table midstream, okay? Don't beat the table midstream. Lesson learned. Let's continue. God damn. Well, um, you know, a lot of people are. Listen, I'll buy you a house. I know. <laughs> yeah, Houston's good, man. Houston's yeah. great. San Antonio's yeah. dope. Yeah. I would move to, obviously, I'd love to be here, but I'd move to Fort. <laughs> obviously, I'd love to be here. Um, please, Rogan, invite me. Obviously, I'd love to be here. But well, please, what was that? I, I, I would, I would. Dope. Yeah. I would move to, obviously, I'd love to be here, but I'd move to Fort. <laughs> Do you think maybe Brendan's wife is holding him back? That's my guess. I think Brendan's wife, she's a bit of a, you know, She'd be ever ditz, not not her fault. But I think to give her credit, the one time that she's put her foot down, like na 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 na, is the moving to Austin. I don't think she could do it. She's definitely an LA woman, an LA girl to the core. She couldn't go to Austin because, by all accounts, Austin is quite boring. If you listen to Tim Dillon, he's basically he's like you know he's obsessed with celebrities and being in and around Hollywood. And she even though he complains about it, he says Austin's a bit boring. There's not really a lot to do in Austin. It, um, the main city is like four blocks. The main strip is like one road. Um, once you've eaten at all the restaurants, you've eaten at all of them. Basically, there's not more any. You know, there's not much to discover outside of that. So for somebody that's obsessed with LA and shit, 
and going to like Balenciaga and Irwan, all this sort of stuff. Leaving LA to go to Austin's a bit of a downgrade, I would assume. So I reckon my assumption, my guess would be that Brendan's wife put her foot down and said, no way, we're not going to fucking Austin. You know what I mean? We're not going to Austin. I think so. That's my that's my guess. Fort uh, Worth, Texas. Fort like, Worth real Texas. Great. That's real Texas. Yeah. Fort Worth. Yo, big up Koila. Big up Uche. I saw you in the chat. What's good? Hope you're well. Bang your chest. This is great. Yeah. Get some land. We did the arena there last year. Yeah, Fort Worth is right outside the Austin. Arena. Yeah. I'm sorry, right outside Dallas. Would you yeah. ever would That's you right. ever live in New York City? Um, you know, a lot of people are. Ugh. Nashville. <laughs> Eddie Bravo drinking Tiger Fick. Look at that face. Look at the Tiger Fick face. Look at the Tiger Fick face. That That's that. Look at the Tiger Fick face. God damn. That's not a good review, is it? Look at the Tiger Fick face. <laughs> One more time, one more time. That Tiger Fix sip was horrible. And with, with ice too, by the way. Usually if you put ice in your whiskey, it helps to kind of, you know, takes away some of the fucking harshness of it. But the fact that there's ice in it and it still isn't helping with it going down. One more time. Live in New York City? Um, you know, a lot of people are. Ugh. Nashville. <laughs> Big up, big up, big up, big up. Okay, move on. Moving on from that one. Let's see this. This is Brendan Schaub's Mint 400 race prep talk, kinda. Let's see this. This is very odd. So as most of you guys are aware, Brendan Schaub is now becoming a full-time race car driver or something, right? He's racing these like trucks um, through the desert. I don't know. He's doing some, some long distance race thing, right? So he quit stand-up comedy to have to spend more time with his family but then he picked up a new hobby that's going to take time away from his family make that make sense it doesn't make sense but we continue so he's got this new hobby he's training to become a race car driver he's acting like he was doing it on the sly and the, you know, he's always wanted to be a race car driver it's always been his passion blah 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 and you know you'd think because it's a new hobby and something that he's been trying to do now to maybe occupy his time it's really giving some, you know, whatever to do outside of not doing stand up anymore. You'd think he'd be more enthusiastic about talking about it, but I get the feeling there's not he's not telling the whole truth about the situation because listen to him, listen to how much, listen to how hard Brian has to try to pull information out of him regarding this Mint Four Hundred race thing and how little information Brendan offers up. So is he being purposely coy because he wants to save it for his show? Does he feel like Brian is waiting time to talk about his thing because he doesn't know anything about cars? Or is it all just one big grift and he doesn't want to talk about it because he's not really bothered about it? I don't know. Listen to the clip and I want you guys to let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Get ready for that Mint 400 race I was telling you about. Yeah. How'd that go? It was great. Did you like it? Things intense. Did you actually race? Oh, yeah. 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 What truck? It's called a Class 1 truck. Most of them okay. have LS engines in them. This had a Ford engine in it, but it was fun. Right. All right. It was cool. Did that, and then back home Saturday, baby. More? That's great. And then we went to, um, I then? didn't go to the fight. That's what you drove? Yeah. Damn, what's that like? It's crazy. How, how many horsepower? That one has like 800 something. How'd you do? Good. It, you got to gotta get used to it because yeah. the, the clutch, the way you, the way you shift, it was, it's, just, it's just different. Yeah. It was fun. So it's so much you, fun. Did you actually race people or you just... just no, we're just getting fast. ready because I, I got to do a ton of... So did you race or didn't you race? Are you training or are you not training? Are you excited or are you not excited? Can you please offer some more information? Can you please let us know what you're doing and why you're doing it? Why post pictures up on Instagram if you don't want to talk about it? What's happening here? Is it a race? Is it a competition? Is it a trial? Is it an exhibition? What is it? training before the mint 400 because mint 400 so you are going to do a race yeah oh yeah really yeah the, because the mint 400 it's 400 miles in like off-road terrain oh geez in yeah i guess so it's going to take about six you, hours you might break off-road terrain 400 miles hmm break down sit in a car i don't know Is, isn't that how you break down why is he so what well, hold on why did he say that about about breaking down isn't that how you break down in a car doesn't your car break down while you're sitting inside it why is it acting as if like your car can't break down if you're driving it? 
Isn't that how it breaks down in the first place? What? One more time. Sitting in a car? One more time. Know. One more time. In yeah. I guess so it's going to take about six you, hours. You might break down. Sitting in a car? I don't know. No. Are you a good... Brian's pussy out straight away. I don't know. Are you a good driver, though? Can you race? I mean, that thing, if, if I flip that thing, I should just stop driving all vehicles. That thing's pretty damn hard to flip. Yeah. But it's fun. I dig yeah. it. Hold on. What's harder to flip? One of those bouncy up and down flipping s s truck things that he's going to race or the regular pickup truck that he allegedly flipped upside down. Please someone tell me in the stream chat. Someone tell me in the stream chat what is harder to fucking flip. Again, I'm not a car guy, right? Great car, never met him. Don't even have a fucking driver's license apart from my provisional, which I use as ID to go to clubs or I used to cut up some of my fucking drugs on my phone. So I don't really know nothing about fucking driving. So let me know. What's harder to fucking flip? That dune buggy thing that he's going to be driving that looks like it bounces up and down and has crazy fucking suspension or a fucking, um, what's it thing? Um, a TRX. What is, what is easier to fucking flip? Please let me know in the stream chat. What's easier to flip? I want to know. What is fucking easier to flip? Because in my head, I feel like flipping, you know, I feel like flipping one of these. In my opinion, I feel like flipping this. Oh, oh. I feel like flipping one of these TRX trucks is way harder than flipping one of those dune buggy things. But maybe I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Who knows? Please let me know in the stream chat. What is the harder thing to flip? Let me know in the stream chat. What is harder to flip? Please let me know. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think is harder to flip? Okay, people are saying TRX is, hard, is easy. Okay, really? Okay, I didn't know that. Um, Austin Cage is saying TRX is way easier to flip than that dune buggy thing. Okay, fair play. I guess that makes some... Th there's some sense in that, right? Maybe those dune buggies are made the way they are. They probably have wide... Um, what you call it? Wide... Um, I don't know what they're called. Wheelbase. Maybe helps to keep them fucking you know, down to the ground. There's something about engineering wise, how they make it helps to keep these things low. So maybe that, that car is harder to flip than this car, right? Maybe it's harder to flip this than to flip that. Maybe, maybe it's harder to flip this than to flip that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But what do I know, huh? What do I know? What is harder to flip? Doom buggy is hard to flip. People are saying my reference is these cars um this racetrack might be easy to flip but the trx is still very easy to flip compared to a regular truck okay cool i didn't know that i didn't know that so i guess brendan is right there i guess brendan is definitely right there trx gets flipped easy dune buggy not so much not so much cool let's continue yeah i love it good the mint 400 be fun chuck norris racing the mint 400 okay paul newman okay Vanna White was Miss 400. All right. Back in the day. Bring up Vanna White Mint 400. Dude, you forget how hot she was. She had something to say. Every episode, we've got a segment that involves, like, oogling some woman that isn't your wife, innit? It must be nice marrying, you know, regular white women in America. It must be really nice. Because they don't seem to give a fuck about this sort of stuff. Because if the kind of ladies that I date, the kind of wife that I have, woo, I could not get away with doing this. I could not just get away and be on the stream and be like, oh, look at her tits. Look at her bum. Look at those lips. I couldn't get away with that. I couldn't. I'd get a fucking shoe thrown on my head. So the fact that these guys can get away with this says a lot. My boy Matt was like, you know, Vanna White won Miss Mint 400. Go to the one where she's in the, no, go to the black and white top. No, no, no. The, the, the only Sorry. one. Yep. Dude. You have a problem with that? I even have to I even have to watch what I like. Exactly. Big up Matty Boy. My wife would castrate me live if I ever thought Exactly. Exactly. I have, I have to even watch what I like. You know what I mean? I can't even like certain things in public because it would just come up my fucking name. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck is that? I'll get sent a screenshot with a circle. Who the fuck are you liking? Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't take the kids. Don't take the dog. Please. Now they can't do the Miss Mim. Okay, fair enough, Kevin. I take it back. I take it back. All the all the respectful white queens out there that fucking you know have some standards, right? They don't let their guys do some nonsense. My bad. My white queens out there. My new my my snow princesses. My my white Nubian queens. If that even is a thing. <laughs> 
Putin 400 now because was, of woke she was culture. Very, very broad, broad, broadless there. Woke culture. Woke culture. What does woke culture got to do with a woman wearing a, a transparency looking t-shirt? He's acting as if OnlyFans doesn't exist. Woke culture. One more time. Huh? Woke culture. Bruv, we have a paper here in the UK called The Sun. On page three of The Sun, there's a, there's a girl with her tits out every fucking, every day of the week. A new girl with her tits out every fucking day of the week. You go on fucking Twitter and there's full blown porn on there. Woke culture is stopping us from having um, girls at driving events wearing, wearing like tight, very see through t shirts. Come on, bro. Come on. Let's be real here. The, the black and white top. No, no, no. The, the, the only one. Yep. Dude. You have a problem with that? Now, they can't do the Miss Mimp 400 now because was, of woke culture. Very, very broad, broad, broadless there. <laughs> you got that? B -b 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 yeah, I got a little, I got a little, uh... That was... Honestly, imagine, I, I wish I could get away with that. Just sitting there, watching another, watching another woman's breasts live on stream. I wish I could get away with that. I would be on the streets. I would be on the streets. I'd have my clothes thrown out the window, right? Like in some scene in the R&B movie where the guy's like trying to sing you know for his woman's love after he got caught cheating i'd be like one of those type of scenes like trying to catch all my jackets and shit as they're getting flung in the air it would not end well for me but these guys can sit here and just oogle at this white lady's breasts right without any fucking regard right no regard for their family no regards for their wife no fear of having to sleep on the sofa or be in a doghouse nah mate nah that's why i need to make it that's why I need to become a professional podcaster so that I can make enough money that I can say, shh, shh, shh. Where are you going? Shh. Who's that texting you? Shh. That's what I need to do to get like these guys. Shh. Whose knickers are that? Whose knickers are those in your pocket? Shh. Why do you have a pocket full of condoms? Shh. <laughs> That's what I need. I need to get fucking podcast rich to go. <laughs> She's that was a Miss Mint four hundred. QT pie. Hell My boy Matt shows me that shows me that picture, and she's obviously painfully hot. And I go, God, I wish you had that hat. Jay was like, You know, I know you're gay. <laughs> Talking about her hat. That's ah. fair point. <laughs> great humor, great banter. So Brendan's a race car driver. Maybe he isn't, maybe he is. Maybe it's an exhibition thing, who knows? He's not really offering up much information regarding the whole thing. Um, let's see how it plays out. It's a good thing for him, I guess, timing, for guess mental health-wise, maybe being at home all the time after spending all of those years trying to become a stand-up comedian and it failing. Maybe it's good to have a little bit of a buffer in between to transition from full-time dad mode. But I do still find it incredibly hilarious that he made such a big and song, song and dance about quitting stand up to focus on his family. And in the first instance, he gets a new hobby that takes him away from his family. He runs to it. He runs to it. Runs to it, open arms. Absolutely hilarious, man. Hilarious. Ah. Uh, what's happening? Um, what's Uche? My British friend almost got beat up backpacking in Panama because a black guy overheard her say knickers and thought she was talking about something else. Yeah, exactly. Hey, yay. Big up the girls out there. Big up my gal them with the big knickers. Big up my big knicker gal them, right? That, that, that size, right? The, that size. Big up my big knicker gal them, huh? Big up my big knicker gal them, huh? Big up. I'm holding you right now. Look, look at me holding you. Big up my big knicker girl, them. Big, big knicker girl. <laughs> Hope you all well, right? We want those knickers that are like kites, you know what I mean? Like kites. We want the kite knickers, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? We want that parachute knickers you can fucking jump out of the airplane with. Big up. Whew. What are you guys saying? Yeah, sorry, babe, I was out with the boys, but there's a new channel. <laughs> exactly. This new Chanel. David Guerrero. David Guerrero, exactly. So, not even sorry, babe. Like, where were you? With the boys, doing what? Fucking other women. Why? Shh. There's a bag. Open the bag. There's a bag in there. Shh. Who's texting you? Megan fucking Fox. Why? Because she loves me. 
<laughs> There's some new shoes, okay? You're not allowed outside, though. You can't go anywhere. That's that fucking Andrew Tate fresh and fit methodology, right? I do what I want to do. You can't do what you want to do, all right? Double standard things. Double standard things. We live for it. We live for double standard. That's what we live for. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Double standards, gang. You get freedom. She gets nothing. You feel me? Yeah. Let's continue. Um, next clip is Brendan hating and interrupting Brian Callen's UFC recap. This is an epic example, an epic display of unbridled, unfucking, just just pure and utter hating. Hating that would make Red Bar proud. Hating that would make me proud. Hating that would make comedy enforcement proud. Right? You know how he hates on fucking Kalila because she's hot and shit, right? That kind of level of hating that would make comedy enforcement proud. Big up M. Dus. Thank you for the flipping $1 super chat. No message, but big up you. Appreciate it, right? The kind of hating that would make fucking Red Bar proud. The kind of hating that would make me proud. Big up Austin Kershaw. Appreciate you, brother. In the racing world where everything is made to save weight, down to using titanium bolts to save weight, I wonder how two guys that weigh over 200 pounds <laughs> each will do. Yeah, good point. Good fucking point. I never thought about that, actually. I never thought... To be fair, to be fair, maybe the extra weight will help them, like, have a lower center of gravity or bring them down a bit more, right? Maybe that's what it'll help them do. So it won't flip. So it'll help them, like, to stay lower as they're fucking driving. You know what I mean? That's what it might do. It might help with the fucking driving. You know what I mean? Like, it might fucking help. You know what I mean? That's what it might do. So maybe that's what will happen. Maybe that's what will happen. But bigger Austin Casey, appreciate ya. Okay, go back to what I was saying. This is a level of hating that I've not seen since the, you know, the golden era of the fucking Breakfast Club with Charlemagne the God. This is the kind of hating I've not seen since the heyday of Red Bar. This is not the fucking hating I've not seen since fucking Comedy Enforcement was out here hating on Kalila every single day. This is the kind of hating I've not seen since I was going on unfucking interrupted rants against fucking Eric Griffin because I fucking hate that guy, right? This is the kind of hating that would make me look like a fucking idiot. Brendan hating super hard that Brian Callen went to the fucking UFC 298 live and he doesn't even let him fucking finish the story. Listen to this. Listen and watch this. This is fucking crazy. The hating is on another level. Baseball, football, and then, dude, I couldn't wait. I text you guys. You know what I don't like? Hmm. When I text our group, when it's Joe Rogan, Eddie Bravo, you and me, when I text, I can't wait for these fights at 7 a.m. And Name drop. One more time. Name drop. And then, dude, I couldn't wait. I text you guys. You know what I don't like? Hmm. When I text our group, when it's Joe Rogan, Eddie Bravo, you and me, when I text, I name drop. And then, dude, I couldn't wait. I text you guys. You know what I don't like? Hmm. When I text our group, when it's Joe Rogan, Eddie Bravo, you and me, when I text, I can't wait for these fights at 7 a.m. and nobody responds. <laughs> nobody oh, else did I not respond? Nobody did. Brendan's one of those type of guys. Don't you hate those type of guys? The type of guys that hold it over your head if you don't text back at the moment that they text? Hey, the whole point of a text is that you can get back to it later. Yes, it's nice if I immediately reply to you there and then, but the whole point of a text is that you can take your time. So if somebody texts you at 9, you can maybe reply at 12, maybe reply at 1, maybe the next day. If that's your friend, you don't give a fuck. But Brendan's the kind of guy that will, like, quote, tweet, or no, he'll quote his own text and be like, um, still waiting for an answer. Like, what the fuck? Are you my fucking girl? Are you my wife? Are you my concubine? Are you my mistress? Allow it with the quoting of your tweet asking me to flip in, answer your question on the spot. Come on, man. Grow up. Men don't do that to other men. Maybe to some itches you're trying to, you know, but not to other dudes. Hey, answer my text. Why didn't you reply back to me? Meh, 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 meh. It's like, shut up. They were, and plus, Rogan's working. Eddie Bravo's probably somewhere working or maybe he's at the event. Brian, Brian Callum's at the event. The last thing you want to do is respond to fucking group chats while you're watching UFC fucking live. Why would you do that? 
God damn it, man. I, uh, no, uh, you know what? But nobody responded. You, you went, I'm going. And I saw it and I went, Saul, how can you add an L? How can you add an extra letter to Saul? Saul, as in Saul Goodman, as in Saul to Saul. Huh? As in Soul Food, as in Soul Train. <laughs> what? Uh, you know what? But nobody responded. You, you went, I'm going. And I saw it and I went, Huh? Saw it and I went, You know what? I'm going. And I saw it and I went, What? I saw it and I went, Huh? I saw it and I went, Yeah? I saw it and I went, Huh? I saw it and I went, Huh? I saw it. Huh? I saw it and I went, What? You know what? You didn't respond to mine. So I didn't respond to yours. <laughs> That's so petty. I know. What the fuck, dude? Saul. I know. You just were like, I'm, I'm putting them on ice. Nah, here. man. If you don't like mine, I don't like yours. I'm cool, man. Cool. I'm going. I went, ah, whatever. That's, you know what? Now that I think about it, that's right. I got nothing back from Nothing. You. Like nothing, dude. Nothing. Amazing. You didn't, you didn't like mine? How? Because uh, I want to share in the excitement. The, the, it's the, UFC 298. UFC 299, you're going to get that text. UFC 300. There's nothing better in sports than a big UFC from top to bottom. And when it starts at 3.30, it ends at 10. Bubba, we go in Sizzler for seven yeah, hours. That's a long time. Nothing better. Yeah. Remember, he asked Brent, he's, Brendan's asking Brian to tell him how his experience was at UFC 298. But what you see in this clip is the majority of the time, Brendan's talking about what is the best practice and where you should, like he's going to be talking for the majority of this clip, even though the person that went to the actual event, the person that sat there and watched fucking Volk versus, um, what's his name? Ilya Tapuria live was fucking Brian Callan, the guy here, this little wrinkly old guy on, on the right hand side of your screen. He's the one that went there with his son as well, right? So it's a nice little family event, a nice little family day out, probably got hella stories, probably got some tidbits to share. But for the majority of the time, Brendan's the one talking. Absolutely insane. Imagine having a friend like this. Imagine having a friend like this. Well, I, I, uh, I brought my son. We walked in about seven o'clock, sat down for the first, for, we, we caught the final prelim fight. I, you then, know what I was going to ask you? I was going to yeah. test. I was say, more when drunk. did you get to the arena? Casuals get there Fuck between no. 6.45 and 7.30. Yeah, I got there about 6.30. You, you just said before the... Yeah, I got there exactly you got there 6, 6.26, actually. You got there about 7. No, no, I got there. I, I parked at 6.26. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know when and I'm then came there. in. Um, but Good seats? Sitting, well, I don't know. We were right behind Joe Rogan and Michael Bisbing and, and John Ennick, So I Those are pretty good seats. Why is Brian trying to act humble... Koi, you know what Brian's doing? You know what Brian's doing? To be fair to him, you know what Brian's doing? Let's be fair to Brian. Brian's doing that thing that we all um, understand or we all learn as we go through our journey of working. When you start working a regular job, right? The first thing that you do, and you do it with all, um, with all sincerity, you do it with not a bad bone in your body, right? When you go on holiday and you come back and your friends say, hey, how was your holiday? You go on like a long fucking diatribe about how amazing it was to go away for the weekend, spend some time with your partner, visit your family, sightsee, backpacking. You start giving them all these little tidbits and stories. You start mentioning people that you met and you're enthusiastically sharing your story of your holiday. But after a couple of times, you'll notice something. People don't actually care how your holiday was. They're just being fucking polite. They don't really want you to give them a full play-by-play -play of your holiday. Because, guess what? That whole time you're on holiday, they were at work. They were probably covering for you. They were working that entire time hating, right, the fact that they were at work. And now you're coming back, they're like, fuck, man, I wish I went on a holiday. So, they don't want to hear a fucking half an hour description of how your fucking holiday was. They want maybe the cliff notes, and that's it. So, Brian's doing that thing where when you come up on holiday, and you just act like it was no big deal. No, how's your holiday? Oh, it was good. It was all right. Or what you do when you, with, you, with your partner, right? With your, for, the, for the fellas out there. If you've been out with the fellas, right, with the guys, and you've had a good time, you've had a really good time, you got tipsy, you might go a bit high, you had some banter, you, you had some great food, great stories were shared, right? Maybe you had a couple of flirts with the fucking waitresses and shit. 
You don't go back home and tell your wife that. You don't be like, oh my God, it was so amazing. I had the best time. No, 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 no. That's going to get you in trouble. You play it down. You're like, how was it? How was your, how was your night out, babe? Yeah, it was all right. Saw the lads, you know, hanged out. You know how it is. Have a couple of beers, but I'm a bit tired, so I left. You always play it like coy. You're like, yeah, it was all right. You get, you, I didn't really even get drunk, you know. I didn't really drink that much. Even though you drank like 16 pints. I didn't really do that much. Even though you did all the lines. You play, that's what, that's what Brian Callen's doing. He's like, eh, it was all right. It was all right, you know. I was sitting behind John Anik and Joe Rogan. Eh, not the best seats, right? Right behind one of the fucking co-commentators of the fucking UFC. One of the faces of the UFC. Behind a legend. Eh, wasn't that good. <laughs> Big up Brian Callen. And then came in, um, but good we seats. Sitting, well, I don't know. We were right behind Joe Rogan and Michael Bisbing and and John Ennick. So I don't know if that's good. It just <laughs> depends. Can you see it great there? <clears throat> it's a good. That's a very good. Because you, because listen, it's fun to sit Kate side and Joseph Rogan's our buddy. You're behind him. Ah, oh! this Joseph Rogan thing. I fucking hate it. Why does he keep doing this? Do you think the Joseph Rogan thing is him trying to like exude familiarity? Is it him trying to like? say that as a thing so it gets back to rogan and then rogan could like mention on the show oh my friend brendan always calls me joseph like what is he keep like what is this fucking what is this joke what is this attempt at humor joseph rogan like so cringe you know what it reminds me of hear me out you know what it reminds me of when brendan calls joe rogan joseph it reminds me of those girls oh big up nj ranger appreciate you bro I got another Tarantino movie pitch. Go. The Detestables. Yeah. It's like The Expendables, except they're where the woke meets the wall. <laughs> Last line of defense. Be thank him for the jank, huh? That's good one. I like that one. I like that one. The Detestables. The la Honestly, the fact that Rogan said that with, with, with like a straight face, with the last line of defense. What? What? Burt Kreischer can't run up a flight of stairs without probably his heart giving way. And you're saying to me, you guys are the last line of defense. To what? For what? For who? Last line of defense. Huh? Guess gay? Como? <laughs> like, huh? Fucking hell, last line of defense, you know. Big up NJ Ranger. Um, 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 oh, that's what I was going to say. When Brendan calls Joe Rogan, Joseph Rogan, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of those girls, those like, you know, those 40s, those groupies that are into rappers. And they always refer to the rappers by their name, like Playboy Carty. There'll be some foot online, be like, oh my girl's hanging out with Jordan. You know those girls, they always call the rapper by their name. Oh, it was me and Jordan, me and my... It's like, bro, come on, man, relax. We get it. We get it. This rapper fucks you. We get it, right? He fucking... What it, we understand. So what is Brendan fucking Rogan or something? Is that why he keeps calling him Joseph? Because they like they know each other intimately. What's going on here? Please allow it, bro. Allow it. Allow it. It just it depends. Can you see it great there? <clears throat> it's a good. That's a very good. Because you because listen, it's fun to sit Kate side and Joseph Rogan's our buddy. You're behind him. Hate to spoil the thing here the best seats are not there because you have the oh sorry the best seats are not behind joe rogan really the best seats are not cage side behind joe rogan around all the fucking celebrities with the tendency with the up with ob with, with um with um with the uh, what you call it with the hope what's that word called i'm trying to think of with the oh fuck, i got a brain freeze Whatever, with that, you're in a position where the cameras are going to pan to you, right? You might actually get seen on TV. So you're telling me those seats behind Rogan, where the camera is usually panning across the fucking octagon, where you might get your fucking five minutes of fame sitting next to fucking Jamiroquai and Brad Pitt. You're telling me that's not a good place to sit? Really? Really? Okay, cool. So my laptop is better. All right, cool, cool. My laptop's better. Thank you for letting me know. VIP streams is better than watching UFC live in person. Sure. Sure. The the pillars, mm. you have a lot of people in front of you. You usually want to be, now, Grant, if you're a celebrity stuff, but you want to be kind of in the first, like, not first row, but we're just above. So your eyesight. Yeah, no, for, for, for us, I, it was great. You're I mean, good? Seeing him that close. And my smaller. son, for my son, too, it was so awesome. Oh, I bet. 
you know? And then just, I, I said hi to Dana, who was very sweet, and then uh, obviously saw Joe. Now, would you come up and be like, Dana? No, I just was walking by. I said hi to Mario Lopez. And then... Uh, now, did you walk up there and go, Mario? No, no, Mario's... Fucking hell, man. It's so exhausting. Like, I don't know if you guys have friends like this, honestly, because I don't have uh, many real friends in real life, as you can tell. But one thing that I do go out of my way to do is I always give people the time and the space to say what they want to say or to, you know, to have their point of view. I never do the whole interruption thing. Or even if I've got a story that can trump their story, I let them have the fucking floor. It's part of, like, good communication. Sometimes I even do an alley-oop. I'll be like, oh, my God, man, that must have been awesome. Did, what, did you go to here and there? Like, I, I give them the fucking alley-oop so they can, they can fucking dunk the story. I don't fucking keep interrupting so that I can, what, like, throw him off? It's, just a, it's exhausting because you have to then remember what you're trying to say, but then you have to answer the question. It's like, shut the fuck up, man. Let me speak without interruption, please. Big up, Kiff. Dunnage. The best seats aren't cage that. side behind the midget. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Big up Kiff Dunag. Dunag. Dunage. Dunaga. Donagi. Donahue. However you pronounce it. Apologies. Kiff D. Appreciate you very, very much. Of course, man. Sitting behind fucking Rogan like that. I mean, like that. Like a kangaroo. Eyesight. Yeah, no, for, for for us, I, it was great. I You're mean, good. Seeing him that close. And my son, for my son too, it was so awesome. Oh, I bet. You know, and then just I, I said hi to Dana, who was very sweet, and then uh, obviously saw Joe. Now, would you come up and be like Dana? No, I just was walking by. I said hi to Mario Lopez, and then uh, now, did you walk up there and go Mario? Two people that hate Brendan, Mario Lopez and Dana White. Look at look look at the hate. Look at the hate on his face. Look at this. Look at the hate. He can't help but hating. The funny thing is that I feel like Brendan hasn't been officially banned from UFC events, but I think he knows deep down if he went, Dana's such a prick. Dana's such a petty, vindictive, um, you know, un unforgiving guy. He would for sure, for sure, get the security to escort him out. He knows it. He knows it. So that would be too embarrassing. So he doesn't go. But I'm sure he's not officially banned. But if he does go... And Dana sees him, he's gonna make sure to get security to take him out. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. So he's like, you know what? Fuck that. I don't wanna go. Which I understand, but come on, you can't hate this much, man. You gotta relax with the hating. Yo. No, no, Mario was he's such a sweetheart, man. He just saw me and he was like, Hey, what's up? And we were start we were talking. And then I turned to walk this way because I wanted to go say hi to Sean O'Malley, and then Dana was right there and we I said, What's up? And then, you know, introducing my son, but we were just talking. And he was just uh, excited about the fights. And then I said hi awkwardly to Mark Zuckerberg. Because, <laughs> like, we locked eyes and we're standing there. And, uh, and he, I go, hey, how you doing? And he goes, hey, hi, hi, how are you? And we shook hands. Did he go, nice to meet you. <laughs> Boo. No, nah, he was really sweet. What was weird about him is that there a lot of the fighters were talking to him and looking at him because he was cage side. And then he was in uh, Volkanovski's Insane. corner. That's why, Mar that's why Alex lost. Great. Imagine being a former fighter and then you're saying this about other fighters. That's why he lost because Mark Zuckerberg in corner. Then he wonders why people don't like him. He was out here sucking off Volk, saying that Ilya Tapuria would not win. Anybody that thinks Tapuria is going to knock out Volk is insane. That's what he said before the fight. He said anybody that thinks Volk could get knocked out is insane. Come on, bro. And then now you're, you're fucking kicking him while he's down. That's why he lost, because Mark Zucker was in his corner. Fucking hell, Brendan, man. Don't burn all the bridges, brother. Come on. Is that what it was? The only Big up, Craig. Big up, AG. This is better than 298 watching ringside right behind Onik Rogan and Bisping. Yeah, this is better. Than yeah, hey, you guys flatter me too much. It's not that much better, please. I'm fucking currently streaming to you on a fucking 2011 MacBook Pro with my windows just about shaking all over the place. I'm covered in olive oil. I've got a bit of deodorant on. I've got fucking cheap two pound fucking dollar fucking headphones. I've got $20 fucking webcam and shit. Don't flatter me too much. It's not better than UFC. Let's relax. I appreciate you, but let's fucking relax, okay? But I do appreciate you, but let's relax. But I do appreciate you, but let's relax. 
but I do appreciate it. <laughs> Is that right? He came out with a with his outfit on, and yeah, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. B, let's take a little break, dude, little because break. we have partnered up with Five. Real, real, real. You gotta remember the UFC. You see, I did that clip there. You see what I did there? You see what I did there? You see how I clipped it? You see, I fast forwarded the ads because nobody cares about the ads. You see what I did there? Once more, yeah, so, look what yeah. I did. Look what I did. B, let's take a little break, dude, Editing because play. we have partnered up with Five. Real, real, real. You gotta remember hey. the UFC. Champion editor over here. See that double C? You see what I've gone? Big up the YouTube premium gang. Not our biggest fans. Hmm. Our biggest fan? You mean your biggest fan? Let's go back there again. I like how Brendan is trying to group Brian into the hate train. Nah. I think the UFC is okay with Brian Callen. They just don't like you. Go back again. I remember the UFC is not our biggest fans. Hmm. Press X to doubt on that one. I don't think the UFC likes you, but I think they're okay with Brian. That's the funny thing as well. If Brendan and Brian went to the UFC, <laughs> Dana would for sure get Brendan kicked out, but leave Brian there and maybe give Brian better seats towards the front. That's how vindictive and petty he is. And I think Brendan knows that deep down. That's why he doesn't put himself in harm's way. He doesn't want to be a meme. He doesn't want to get clipped up and shit. He's like, you know what? Fuck that. Mm. Nah, I said, you're going to show all these people and not show Brian, and we're going to pretend Brian's not there in the front row? Okay, yeah. UFC 298. Well, maybe I'm not a celebrity anymore. You ever think of that? Mm. But anyway, um, it was good. A couple other people were there. Uh, I wonder if the UFC didn't want to put Brian on the screen because of the rape allegations. Is that possible? Or am I thinking too much into that? Did they not want to put him on screen because of that? Maybe, they, maybe that's why. They didn't want, you know, unnecessarily have him on screen and then you get unne you, you get unnecessary kickback and harsh, you know, criticism. Maybe that's why. Because it was a bit odd. He wasn't on the screen. Big up, Kiff. Dunnage like Tunnage, Papa. Oh, like Tunnage. Okay, so Dunnage. Big up, Dunnage. Big up, Kiff, Dunnage. Big up, Gif, Tunnage. Gif, Dunnage. Gif, Tunnage. Tunnage, 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 Tunnage. Big up, Gif. Dunnage, appreciate you, my friend. Appreciate you. Uh, that I saw um, BMXers and you know, you know, I don't know BMXers. Yeah, some famous. Oh, BMX I wouldn't guy. know BMXers, right? No. But by the way, listen to this. I wouldn't know BMXers, right? He says this famous last words. I wouldn't know BMXers. BMXers, huh? BMXers are blockbuster. Now listen to him. Listen. Keep keep listening. Would anybody in here? Yeah. BMXers? Famous? He's like the most famous one huh? I heard. Who? Oh, your boy um Miles huh? Teller was there. Yep, I saw Miles. I didn't say hi, but you know, I don't That's know. my guy. But Love him. Watch, watch, watch. Rampage was there too, yeah. I didn't see him. Rampage was there. Did you how do you know Miles Teller? I know Miles when I first moved to LA. He's be oh yeah. Yeah, I know Ryan. Yeah, Williams. he's there. Ryan's the yeah, man. There. Yeah. yeah Ryan. I know Ryan. Ryan's the man. Did he just say who fucking knows BMXers? And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, I know Ryan. Ryan's my friend. I love Ryan. Honestly, so fake. <laughs> one more time. One more time. This one I heard. Who? Oh, your boy, um, Miles. One more time. One more time. One more time. You know, I don't know. BMXers? Yeah, some famous. Oh, I wouldn't know guy. BMXers, right? No, or would anybody BMXers? in here? Yeah. BMXers? Huh? Famous? He's like the most famous one I heard. Who? Who? Oh, your boy, um, Miles Teller was there. Yep, I saw Miles. I didn't yeah. say hi, but, you know, I don't That's know. That's my guy. But Love him. No worries. Rampage was there too, yeah? I didn't see him. Rampage huh? was there. Did you, how do you know Miles Teller? I know Miles, Miles when I first moved to LA. LA. Yeah. He's be oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, I know Ryan. I know yeah, he's Ryan. there. Ryan's the yeah, man. Ryan's the man. Yeah, Ryan's the man. Best yeah. guy. Um, never met him. Fucking so fake, in it? Great guy. Never met him. I don't know any BMXers. BMXers, who the hell is that? Try to fucking mock and demean and fucking dismiss what Brian was saying. All of a sudden, oh yeah, I know him. Alex Pereira face. Like what? Come on, man. But I know Miles Teller when I first moved to LA. He's best friends uh, with my boy Scotty McKnight, who we played at my CU together. Boy. Oh yeah. So we oh, all, when I first came here, that was my those were my only friends. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, before he was kind of famous. Or? Way before. That's so cool. And he, he, sure enough, was like, "I'm the next Marlon Brando." I was like, Ugh. "Could you pick up the phone and call Miles Teller now, though? 
Could you pick up the phone and call him now, though? Would he go on the fire and the kid? That's what we want to know. Okay, kid. And Is that what he was yeah, saying? Oh, yeah. So he's wow. always been super confident. Good for him. Not cocky, just just he's believes in himself. Yeah. Yo, big up MH. I just want to see you do bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. Fuchsman Jung Oh, there we go. You didn't do enough there, but I tried to I tried to give the bean cheese bean cheese there. Bean cheese burrito wrap. You know how we do. Big up the bean cheese collective. Bean cheese all day long. Okay? Alrighty. Bean cheese gang. Bean cheese gang. Uh, crushing it. Such yeah. a good person. Yeah. Yeah, he seems like a great guy. And what'd you think of the fights? Now you did send daddy to to be fair, Brian <laughs> sent me two grand. On Saturday night, I lost. we do not care. Anyway, cool. That's that done. That's that fucking done. One more clip and then we move on to the other clip from TFAT Kate. We've got this one. This is a good one. This is a fucking good one. This is a good one. Okay, those of you tuning in live, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, you're seeing what you like, please like the stream. Give me some love. Like the stream. Tap the little button down below. Let the gut, let the owl go. Let the owl go know that you. Uh, huh? Cool. Big up. This is one of the most interesting, funny clips I've seen in a long, long time. Brendan tries his best not to hate on Sean Strickland, despite Sean Strickland having a very direct and brutal clapback at Brendan when he was going back and forth with that Nina girl, right? That Nina woman who's become all the rage now in MMA, UFC coverage and shit. She's smashing it on social. I forgot her full name. It's Double Barrel. But you know who I mean. The girl with the dark hair. Um, all the guys are first thing after her. All the guys love her fucking coverage. She's fucking smashing it. She came out of the blue and was like, oh, Bri Brendan got some of the worst takes. Brendan clapped back and said what he said. And then Sean Strickland got involved because they're talking about Sean Strickland's fight with Sneaker. So, Sean Strickland's name comes up for the first time post that event and Brendan tries his best not to hate but then he is hating while he's trying to defend Machine Gun Kelly I always find this interesting because Brendan does this a lot where he'll try and defend people like Machine Gun Kelly because he sees com there's some commonality there between them he thinks because Machine Gun Kelly gets a lot of hate so anybody that gets a lot of hate Brendan automatically kind of warms to and thinks they're kind of their peers or their like colleagues or something because they're also derided. But the funny thing is the people that he thinks he's similar to because of the hate he gets, they are still infinitely more talented than him. So Machine Gun Kelly, for what all his ills and his faults, he's still immensely more talented and more famous and more clouted and richer than Brendan would ever be. So the fact that he tries to like seek commonality between himself is fucking redacted. But I still find it funny how he tries to avoid hating on Strickland. Big up, Craig. I have competed in rollerblading competitions with his producer, Casey Big Flex. Ha ha ha. Bean oh, cheese. really? Remember Bacchus' blading career? How did blading go? What? What? Huh? Who used to blade? His producer, Kate. So Casey is a rollerblader. Really? As in what? Rollerblading like around in a circle. That kind of rollerblading. Or like oh like extreme rollerblading, like grinding and shit. What kind of rollerblading? Let me know on the just tell me on the stream chat. What kind of blading? Blading. Yo. Blading. What the fuck is blading? Do you go around in a circle? Do you jump up things? Are you going are you going up and down a ramp? What Como se dice blading? Como es blading? What is, what is blading? Are you grinding? Are you hiding? What's going on with this blading? Doesn't matter. Both were gay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, let's play the clip of Brendan trying not to hate on Sean Strickland. It's fucking hilarious. You guys will enjoy this one. Crowd. That's also part of the sport. You yeah. want it, you want a rambunctious crowd. You want a you want a savage crowd. You want you know you want people laughing with blood in their mouth. There's something about that. So you know when 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 you're winning, ooh man, you want you love it. So that's your music. When you're losing, that's that's you know that's your funeral march. You know, 
So I don't know, man. I, I uh, that's why it's the best. I don't know how to feel. It's also yeah. the worst, but it's also the best. Yeah. No, I'm saying, yeah, I guess I guess I'm allowed to feel mixed about it. I love it and I and I yeah, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me pee real quick. <laughs> he saw the news like fuck this, I'm getting up. <laughs> uh Brendan Sly, he thought he could go piss while the MGK Sean Strickland topic came up, so that when he came back, it was already gone. Cause he didn't want to talk about Sean Strickland. I'm not giving him any free press. <laughs> It's like, come on, man. Come on, Brendan. Don't be a pussy. He always does this, right? He gets involved in these public spats. And then whenever it's somebody that he doesn't want to, like, go back and forth with because he's scared, they might dunk on him. He starts, like, acting like, mm, I'm over it. I'm a big son. Come on, bro. You, you have to get in the mud. Get in the mud, bro. Wait, let's all muck ourselves up now. We're not all too good for this now. Come on. Also, pissing during a one hour pod is fucking embarrassing, right? Having to piss, having to piss during a one hour pod is legitimately embarrassing. Don't you think? Having to go up it like, come on, you can't hold your piss for an hour. Really? Wait, Machine Gun Kelly seen in confrontation with yeah. USC fighter Sean Shirt. It's really funny. Did they really have a confrontation? Well, like Machine Gun Kelly goes to like shake his hand and he says like, why do you dress like that? <laughs> Come on. I know Sean Strickland can be a, a bit of a, a bit of a cunt. That's fucking funny. The first thing he says to, Sean, to, to Machine Gun Kelly, why do you dress like that? That is hilarious, no? Even though I like Machine Gun Kelly, he's got some good tunes. He's actually a decent rapper. Um, unfortunately for Machine Gun Kelly, He's one of the main people. Whenever there's a thread on Reddit about, oh, name a celebrity that is awful in person. He's always one of the people's names that's always at the top. It, you know, it, it's, it's, um, it goes about saying that the common held belief is that Machine Gun Kelly is a proper dickhead in person. He, he kind of carries himself like one, which is unfortunate because he is very talented. But he does also dress like a fucking donut. So it's quite funny to hear... Sean Strickland say that to him in his face. But to be fair, I think if you're Machine Gun Kelly, you actually enjoy that. Because the rest of your career, people are literally laying on the floor over, across fucking puddles to make sure your shoes don't get wet. People are indulging you. They're treating you like a baby. They're worshipping at your feet. Like, they, you know, you just get, you're just getting sucked off too much. So probably if you're Sean Strickland, you probably like being around UFC events and stuff because everybody in the room can fuck you up, right? Everybody can kill you and then take your wife if they wanted to, right? Take your girlfriend if they wanted to. Um, but then they also don't mind fucking, you know, razzing you, giving you a bit of a ribbon, you know, playfully bantering with you. I, I think he probably enjoys it. I'm not going to lie. He probably does enjoy that because the rest of his life is probably full of people sucking him off, literally. And Machine Gun Kelly's like, come on, bro, stop. And he's like, no, why are you dressed like that? And then he goes on to be like, you're with Megan Fox. Like, are you kidding? This is how this is going down. And put out a couple tweets. Hold on, Koyla, really? You was on tour with Machine Gun Kelly? Nice. Are you saying about Machine Gun Kelly, Koyla? That is sick if sure. Okay, nice, 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 nice. It's about it. It's funny. And he's like, Megan Fox, if you need help, let me know. <laughs> That's so funny. Let me see it. He continues, you guys, what the fuck is going on? Transformers, Megan Fox is with that thing. What the actual fuck has happened to the world? Okay, now you're hating too much, Sean Strickland. You can't be, that's dirty Mackin. That is dirty Mackin. That is dirty Mackin. You can't be like, why is she with that thing? Like, come on, that's dirty Mackin. You can't do that. As a man, you should never do that. You should, if you want Megan Fox for yourself, go and take her. But you shouldn't be insulting the man to get the girl. That is such lame brain shit. I hate that shit. And the funny thing about it is, isn't Sean Strickland married? <laughs> so why does it matter who she's with? You know what I mean? Like, what? Um, oh, big up Koyla. Yeah, Vansal. Oh, sick, 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 sick. Good to hear. That's the thing. That's the thing about Machine Gun Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly has earned his stripes. Legitimately. He has earned his stripes. He's come from the fucking gutter, from the mud from the fucking small stages. No one knows who he is to get in there. So maybe a part, because I always enjoy Machine Gun Kelly's interviews. I'm not going to lie. I enjoy his interviews because the way he talks about himself and mental health and the struggles of being an artist, all this sort of stuff. But I think Machine Gun Kelly, I can kind of understand the arrogance and the dickhead behavior because he got it from the mud. 
right? Getting it from the mud and then ascending to the levels of fame that he has ascended to, it's a little bit of a big deal, you know? It's hard not to feel like your shit doesn't stink. That might be the reason why he's like that. But, you know, it kind of is what it is. I just find it hilarious that Brendan thinks like him and Machine Gun Kelly are similar. It's like, the only thing similar about you guys is that you might wear the same trainers. But apart from that, like, it couldn't be, you couldn't be more different than people, you know, career-wise, everything else included. It's fucking hilarious. What did I miss? Is she okay? Is this man the devil? At Megan Fox, are you okay? Do you need assistance? That's so much. Sure, she's gonna do too much. Be careful, MGK. Brendan's still not there. Doesn't Brendan's like still when you make there. fun of Megan. Brendan's Fa still not there. What does that even mean? Do Brendan's I need to include wood chips and hollow points? Do I need to carry a crossbow? Buy a wooden stake? Is this how I'm? Is this how I become the new blade? <laughs> by the way, am I the only person that doesn't mind Machine Gun Kelly's new tattoos? Did you guys see that, by the way? Just, just in case, just, just to continue this. Machine Gun Kelly got some, most of his tattoos covered up. I don't mind it. I don't even understand. Everyone was freaking out about it online, but I don't mind it. What do you guys think? He blackened out a lot of his tats because I think most of them are probably stuff he got done when he was young. So he probably feels like they're a bit lame. But I don't understand why people were hating on this. I actually quite like this. I'm not going to lie. I really like the, the blacked out um, tattoo thing that he's got going on here. I really do like it. I'm assuming he's going to fill up the whole of his body because I think, um, who else did it? I think Kat Von D did it too, right? Kat Von D is, is doing it recently too. But I don't mind this. I think it's pretty cool. Everyone was, what do you guys think? Compared to this and this, I actually prefer him with the blacked out thing than this. I Probably he got bored of this and this looks a bit lame anyway. But I think, I, I don't mind this. I, I think, is it, is, it, is it tribal? I, I don't know how you, how you describe the new stuff he's got going on. But let me show you. I actually don't mind this new tattoo he's got. So that's how he, this is how he used to look, right? <sighs> Rappers that have their names on their body. I never understood this, man. Skepta's got one too. Skepta's got Skepta on his back. MGK's got MG. Like, honestly, I, people that have their own names on their body is fucking bizarre. But anyway, he's got this. This is what his tattoos used to look like, right? You see it there? And then now this is what his tattoos look like. He's got it. So I'm assuming he's going to have it all filled out. I like how he's kept that center clear with the cross so you can kind of see underneath it. So I'm sure, I, I assume he's probably going to get the rest of his body covered as well, maybe. I don't know. But I actually don't mind it. I think it looks pretty cool. What do you guys think? I actually don't mind it. I actually like it. I'm not going to lie. I actually like it. I actually fucking don't mind it. And again, he's a rock star, isn't it? Like a legit one. Plays on big stages with a guitar on stage. I can actually play it for real. Rap, sings, all that stuff. I don't mind it, right? He spits in his girl's mouth while they're having sex and stuff. Like, he's a bit wild. So I, I think this kind of matches his image. I don't mind it. I'm not going to lie. I don't mind it. I prefer this to this. I really do. I prefer, I prefer the blacked out thing to this. I really don't mind it. I really don't mind it. But hey, what do I know? Let's continue. Machine Gun Kelly make hugs. Oh yeah, Johnny. Andrew W. You're right. He did. Andrew W. Is right. He did get one of the best hair transplants ever. Machine Gun Kelly's hair transplant. Whoever did it for him, smashed it. But I'm sure hair hair transplants are probably annoying. I bet hair transplants are probably genetic. I haven't looked into it, but I guess it's based on your genes. Sometimes it just some stuff takes, some stuff doesn't take. I'd assume so. Uh, he just probably got lucky that he got he's got the genes that allow that treatment to actually work and it all kind of grew back like nothing ever happened before fucking incredible characters that's great there's a video too you go down a little way um I, hold on let me see that well, let me see the tweets <laughs> that's a good analogy actually Koila. he seems like a dick because he's like a kid from luton getting mega yeah that's a very good analogy that's a yeah that's very very true a kid from a small town getting that level of famous it's impossible not to become a dick it's impossible because you know where you came from you know you came from absolutely nothing from a place that no one cares about right <laughs> and now you've a literal international star and you're dating one of the most attractive women in the world right of course you're gonna act like a dick of course of fucking course that's a very 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 good analogy i almost hit a vampire tonight they said his name is machine gun kelly how do you have a dope ass name and dress like a 13 goth South Park <laughs> character? To be fair to him, Sean Shook, that's a good point. Machine Gun Kelly's name 
is probably way more interesting than the music he makes. That's the only thing I'd say as a criticism of me as well being a fan of him. I feel like Machine Gun Kelly should be making far more interesting music, you know, when you in relation to his name, you know? Like, his name is pretty badass, but the music is like, what, he's, he's still doing pop punk now, isn't it, right? He's basically still doing pop punk. It's like, come on, bro. Like, young blood music. Like, young blood is terrible. You know what I mean? It's like, ugh. I know, I know all the like all the young white girls like that shit. So if you're into like underage white girls, probably pop punk is a good a good way to go. But come on, man, it's not fucking 2015. You know what I mean? Let's chill. Or 2005, or 2008. You guys going to what the fuck is going on? Transformers. Megan Fox is with that with that thing. What the actual fuck is happening in the world? What did I miss? Is she okay? That's so funny. Man, I just found out about Megan. Where's the Brendan? fuck happened since Where's Transformers? Brendan? I'm done. Good night. Where's fuck, Brendan? fuck, I'm done. Where's Brendan? Um, someone said, be careful, MJ. Okay. This is so good. What else? He's funny. It's good, yeah. <laughs> Big up fingers. We're getting the bag right now, brother. We're getting the bag right now. You feel me? It's still fucking February. It's still Black History Month. So if you're not racist and you don't mind blacks, you don't mind negros, right? You don't mind coloreds. You don't mind Africans. Make sure you fucking like the stream. We're securing the bag right now. Like the stream down below if you're fucking with the fight. Like the stream down below if you're an ally, right? Like the stream down below if you cried. If you cried at the scenes of, you know, black people getting pushed up against walls and sprayed with fucking hoses. Like the fucking stream, okay? Like the stream, okay? Like it. Like it. Like it. Like it. If you're Nick Fuentes, obviously don't like it. But if you're not, like it. Uh, let me see. Let me see the video. It is kind of older, though. Yeah. He's so tall. Sean Strickland is so fun. Brendan, where are you? I can't imagine that did not hurt MGK's ego. Sean Strickland. Let's take a break. This episode is brought to you by. Look at that um, fast forward. Look at yeah, she's hot. I, nothing against yeah. that. I she's, think when, be, when you're when you're that. Are we are we on camera, Chin? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Snaz, um, also, I think her name is Snaz. Hey, new girl, be careful. Brendan doesn't like when you talk back. Brendan's not into people that have dissenting opinions. No, Brendan's not into people that have. Diff Brendan's not into people that question his opinion. Be very careful, my girl. Be very careful. You might get gadooshed. All right? You're doing a good job. You're adding some spice, some flavor to the pod. You have a personality. You're not a fucking regard like George. You actually have some semblance of a spark of a fucking soul in there. And you're letting it fucking out. And you're having a good time. But you have to relax. Because these guys aren't normal. Especially Papa. Papa doesn't like it when you speak up. Or when you have a difference of opinion to him. He doesn't take it too well. So if you don't want to get good douched, let's just let's just chill. Because that was really rude. Are we on camera? Like, whoa. That was let's go one more time. One more time. One more time. You had some things to say. A super talented guy. Yeah. Off your first order. He's like, just like, what the fuck are you wearing, you fucking vampire? It's like <laughs> Machine Gun Kelly's like, okay. You see my girl? Only you, Brendan, will think that's a good comeback, right? Somebody comes up to you and says, um, what you call it? Um, why do you wear that shit? I don't know, whatever. They're saying, ribbing your outfit. And then Brendan thinks a good comeback for that is saying, have you seen my girl? It's like, what? Like, I'm insulting you. Why are you trying to use your girl as back? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that's a strange, for a comedian, that's a strange way to kind of clap back at somebody anyway. But let's just continue. Yeah, that's what Sean then says later. He's like, what? What's happening in the world? Megan Fox is with who? I don't think she knows. You know that. You know what? Look at Brendan trying to say. I don't think she knows. I don't think she's aware of what Sean Strickland said to Brendan. That back and forth they had. Not back. Well, what what he tweeted at Brendan. I don't think she knows. 
<laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> Brendan's trying to like not say nothing to make the so the conversation can carry on. So you know whatever. But she just keeps going on. Sean Strickland, Sean Strickland, Sean Strickland did. He's so amazing. And Brendan's like, Alex Pereira face. <laughs> He's not having it. I don't think she knows. Shanaz, you got to be careful, my my lady. Big S, you got to be careful. Brendan might go douche you. Oh, one more time. Let's go back. Let's go one more time. Yeah, Kelly's like, okay. You see my girl? <laughs> yeah, that's what Sean then says later. He's like, what? <laughs> What's happening in the world? Megan Fox is with who? <laughs> look, he doesn't know. Look, look, look at him. The super talented guy. He's blinking. <laughs> I, she's done a lot of work, work to herself too, though. She doesn't look that. <laughs> He's looking at her like, "Bitch, you better move on from this fucking topic." What? Look how he's looking at her. <laughs> look how he's looking at her. Say one more word. Say one more word. I'm sending you back on the streets. Send one more word. One more fucking word, and you're back to fucking OnlyFans. One more fucking word. One more word. <laughs> Brendan's so pissed. He's so angry. Look at him. He wants to fucking slap her in the face. That's a man that wants to hit a woman. That's a man that's thinking through in his head like, if I physically assault this girl, what will happen? He's playing the scenario through in his mind like. <laughs> He's so pissed. <laughs> And bless her, she has no idea. Look at her. She's just talking, having fun, bantering. It's a podcast. It's what you're meant to be doing. You're meant to be difference of opinion. You're meant to be going back and forth. You're meant to be a bit of teasing. That's a, if you've got a show like this and you're going to have her on the show, what's the point of having her on the show she's going to be flicking through fucking news articles? You might as well have her on to kind of add some colour to the fucking commentary. So add some kind of colour to the podcast. To add a bit of spice. Give it a little bit of a girl's touch. A bit of a feminine touch. That's what you want her to be there for. You don't want her just to kind of parrot what you're saying. You want her to kind of, you know, have her own personality. She's having her own personality. She's having her own views. And Brendan's like, bitch. Bitch. I don't pay you to have opinions. I pay you to delete my comments and to agree with me. Okay? That's what I pay you for. <laughs> and maybe a little, you know, a little tug behind the fucking red curtain. A super talented guy. I, she's done a lot of work to herself too, though. She doesn't look that great anymore. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's older, but she's awesome. Yeah, she's, she's a great hot. person. Yeah, she's hot. I, nothing against yeah. that. I she's, think when, when, you're, when you're that are we Are we on camera, yeah. Chin? Yeah. Okay. Oh. You had some things to say. No, she's great. Megan. Are we on camera, Chin? Oh. Are we on camera, Chin? Oh, that was so rude. I want to see her face again. That was so rude. Bless her, man. That was so rude. One more time. A super talented guy. I, she's done a lot of work to herself too, though. She doesn't look that great anymore. Ooh, yeah, she's, she's older, hot. but she's awesome. She, yeah, she's, she's a great hot. person. Yeah, she's hot. I, nothing against yeah, that. I think when, be, when you're when you're that. Are beautiful. we are we on camera, Chin? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, oh, oh, uh, <laughs> she got gagged. Brendan gagged her. That was impressive. Brendan actually gagged her. He's like, oh, oh, she got gagged. That was incredible. That was incredible. Some things to say. No, she's great. Megan's great. I she's love her. so pretty, though. Like, you yeah. don't need to keep doing this. Yeah. You look great. No, yeah. Well, this fucking Hollywood fucks with your that head, man. Look, I mean, Brad Pitt and Bradley Cooper have had a uh, face lift. I like how Brendan always goes really quiet when they talk about cosmetic surgery because his wife's been, you know, pumped full of shit. He allegedly might have got his lip pumped, might have had some Botox too. He's always oddly quiet whenever topics comes around fucking cosmetic surgery. Yes, all of a sudden he has nothing to say. All of a sudden he's not interrupting, right? When it comes to cosmetic surgery, all of a sudden he's like, Alex Pereira face. He has nothing to say. Come on, Brendan, speak up, mate. Speak up. Come on. Let us know what your thoughts are on cosmetic surgery, please. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Pretty, though. Like, you yeah. don't need to keep doing this. Yeah. You look great. Nah, yeah, well, this fucking Hollywood fucks with your that head, man. 
Look, I mean, Brad Pitt and Bradley Cooper have had a, a face lifts. I didn't know that. That's what? That's amazing, but yeah. Both of them? Uh-huh. No. Isn't that your friend? Who? Bradley Cooper. No, I'm just saying what 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 people have face been breaking lifts, down. Face lifts? Like Biden? Full on? Face lifts? No. Yeah. No. Who told you that? They have. Brad Brad Pitt. Brian? Brad Pitt and I say, hey, Brian, come here. I've had a facelift. That never no. Happened. Brad Pitt never came up to you and said, told you that. Hey, look at me, guys. That never happened. They we'll both had <laughs> facelifts. No, I, don't, I haven't talked to them. Oh, you said they both told you. No, I didn't tell me. You what is this conversation? Did they tell you or didn't they tell you? Like, huh? You just said that, though. No, I didn't Are say you lying that. a little bit, buddy? You. No, but they both had I don't think Brad some has. real work done. Imagine being a fan of this pod, honestly. Imagine being a fan of this pod, like actually being a fan, actually running back home to listen to this, letting it play in the background while you're working and shit, playing it while you're in the gym, playing it while you're taking your dog for a walk, playing it while you're hanging out with your kids. Imagine just like actually enjoying this. Uh, what? Uh, I, I, refuse to I hate to that. tell you that. I know it's bums. Yeah, it's like ah, oh, but he's older. You know what? You know what you're drinking 60. right now? A little bit of hater. How is no, it? What no, flavor I'm, I'm is really, it? Not, I'm what really flavor not. is it? I'm just really what not. What flavor are you sipping? But on? I. But I mean, you can. It's interesting. Somebody broke it down. This this plastic oh, surgeon. Oh no! Was Some. It was on. Hold on. Was it social media or YouTube? No, it's a thing I saw. No. On social media or YouTube? Uh, look. The, the guy's doing it for clicks, look, but you they got look, you. You can look at their oh, face. Oh, no. You can look at their face. No, I'm out. I'm out. Check, please. Just, just bring, if up, a, if bring a, up before and after. If a face. surgeon is going on Instagram going, this celebrity's done this, don't listen to it. I mean. You know what? Let's talk about surgery. Let's talk about Brendan Schaub's surgery. Let's see that. Brendan Schaub lips. Let's see somebody's got a picture of that because that is one. That's one you can see for sure. For sure, he got some work. What do we what do we think about that, eh? Come on, bruh. Look at that. Look at these pictures. Look at these pictures. Holy shit. Holy shit. Let's go and do, talk about fucking cosmetic surgery, eh? You wanna see some cosmetic surgery? I got ya. I fucking got ya, huh? Look at that. What's he gonna say about this? Is that oranges? Is that the oranges that you buy into that make your fucking lips inflamed like that? Why is you, how did your lips go from that? That was when you used to fight to that. How does that happen? <laughs> is that is that natural? Is that exfoliation? Like, how does that happen? How do you go from that to that? To be fair, he had pretty decent lips for a white guy anyway, all right, on the left. There's no reason to prompt them. He had pretty... If you're a guy that's conscious about your lips, he has pretty good lips for a white guy on the left. Why get them plumped? It's a bit odd, isn't it? Also, it's, I don't know. The only people I hear who get their... The only guys who I hear who get their lips done are gay are gay guys, right? Because you want to, you know, have DL... What's that? DSLs. Big, juicy DSLs, which makes sense. If you're gay, why wouldn't you, Right? You get to look good in a fucking selfie and you get and you get and you get to look good while you're doing the act, right? While you're performing fellatio on some random person behind a bin somewhere, you get to look fucking amazing, right? There's, you know, there's some probably sound audio fucking benefits to it as well, right? You get all that fucking goodness, right? I'm, I'm probably going a bit too much into detail, but you get what I mean. But as a hetero, as a sissy, as a cisgendered male, why would you need to have plump lips? Why? Why? Please, why would you need to have plump lips? Tell me. Why would you need that? Especially as a stand-up comedian. Him and character are the only comedians that have like this much surgery, innit? And then the other one is fucking wild. Look at the other one. The other one, I think, it's got the marks, innit? The other one has got the alleged marks. You see the marks? Allegedly, those are the fucking, the puncture in the... In the indentations whatever that fucking word is right those are the puncher the puncher wounds from the needle to get the fucking lips plumped allegedly what do you guys think is that is that brendan biting his lip like that right maybe his bottom two teeth 
you know, I don't know if they're called the bottom, the bottom canines, whatever those teeth are. Is that is that what it is, or is that an, or is that like an injection from a needle to plump up his lips? Honestly, that's a look and a half, isn't it? That is a look. That is a decision to go for those glasses, a man bun, and fucking plump lips, and get filler. That's a lot. Filler those glasses and a man bun. That's a lot. Like that's a decision. That was a choice, right? <laughs> like, Brendan's metrosexual era it was fucking hilarious, man. He really thought he was David Beckham. Right? He really thought he was David Beckham, right? David Beckham's out here looking sexy as fuck without, D you know, DSLs. But Brendan's like, you know what? I need them things. I need some DSLs. What an odd dude. What an odd gentleman. What a bizarro guy. Look at that. Look at that. Huh. Maybe he got hit with a ball while coaching. Lols. Looks gross. Botox B. That's some bait, bait filler. Um, he's closeted in Rogan too. Speed will make you chew your lip. But I think he got... Oh, really? Speed makes you chew your lip? I've, I think I've only done... I think I've only done Speed once. I've never actually bought Speed for myself. I think I've done speed once in the in the toilets at Bergheim. Some guy who I know gave me a little bumpage of the old speed in the toilet somewhere in Bergheim. And let me tell you, I was I was speedy that night. <laughs> I was speedy. I was bouncing off the fucking walls. But I only really done it once. I've never actually had it like, you know, to myself for a prolonged period of time. So I don't really know if you do bite your lips, but I guess that's a thing, right? You bite your lips. The only thing I didn't like about it, it was very harsh up the nose. It felt like I was sniffing, like, um, washing up powder or something. It was like, I mean, but, you know, I got it done. I didn't gag. I didn't vomit. I swallowed that shit. Feel me? I swallowed that shit. But, yeah, I've only, I've only tried speed once. You well, can no, do you Botox. Can no. Hey, Bubba. No, Bubba. Oh, you're, don't be naive, because I was, too. I'm, I was super No, naive. think about a plastic surgeon doing that. Bubba, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> NJ Ranger. ADHD gang, yeah. That was very random. That went all over the place, isn't it? Apologies for the last five, ten minutes. I was a bit... Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> big up the ADHD gang. Big up the self-diagnosed ADHD gang, yeah? Uh-huh. Big up the guys that can't stay focused for more than a minute, yeah? Big up the meandering crew, yeah? Big up the fucking distracted crew, huh? You know how it is. Me right now, I want you to look at me. I know what I'm talking about. I don't think you so. To, no, you got it from a plastic Bubba, surgeon, though. Bubba, you need to trust me on this. I don't. They've both had some real work. But <laughs> Brian, do you know how long you, you have to stay out I of the public Botox, eye for that to I, calm the Botox, down? Botox, guys, sure. guys, guys. I've, I've, I'm very naive. Filler too. Botox. Guys, lips, I'm very naive. Lips. I'm just telling you what happened. Oh God! After doctor's TikTok video explodes, the internet it See got that guy? you. Yeah, dude, that guy's doing any... You know how many clicks... If Bob, I made at, a video going... Look at going, the difference in the faces, Bob. Look at the jawline. Just take a look, please. I'm just telling you. It's what, filler. What's what. Arguing against the idea that Brad Pitt might have had work done is insane. Why wouldn't you? Especially if you're Brad Pitt, you're at the top of your game. Why not, you know, uh, prolong your career a bit? Give yourself a bit... Because it was fairly obvious in that... What's that movie that came out recently? Um... What's it called? Was it Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Whatever that fucking recent movie was that Tarantino did. It was pretty obvious that, number one, Brad Pitt's on gear, and number two, he has some work done, but he still looks fucking amazing. Why wouldn't you do that? Like, you know what I mean? You already got good genetics. You already got a good fucking base. You know, a little bit of a... He probably has done it. It's not, it's not a big surprise, but I'm just surprised that Brendan's arguing against it so much. Like, like, huh? Oh, right, he's 60. I didn't, is Brad Pitt 60 years old? Shit. Is he really 60? Bro, I didn't know that. He's 60. God damn. He looks good to 60 years old, bro. I had no idea Brad Pitt was 60 years old. Shit. So he's much older than Leonardo DiCaprio. Well, I always thought he was the same age as Leonardo DiCaprio. I guess not. He's a good looking man, though, isn't it? Still, at that age. Yeah, why wouldn't... He's already got a fucking good base, right? Brad Pitt old looks like that, right? Most guys old don't look like that. If you give yourself a little bit of a tuck here, 
right? He gets that fucking Nicole Kidman forehead, right? Where you can fucking see your future for it, right? He gets a bit of a pull there, a pull there, right? A little bit of a fucking, you know, filler in the jawline. Why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you do it if you're Brad Pitt? You're already getting loads of roles. Why not give yourself more chance of more roles by giving yourself a little, you know? Why not? Why not do that? Why the fuck not? I would if I was Brad Pitt. I fucking would. Fucking hell. Anyways. Anyways. Let's continue. Let's move on. We've got so many clips to get through. Let's not waste any more time. Apologies for the delays. Apologies for the ADHD. But let's continue. Let's fucking continue. Let's play this one. Um, What's that? What? What the fuck is this? Unofficially? Unofficial. Oh, is that how you pronounce his unfortunately wow unfortunately was the best okay let's let's hear this so he has he's struggling with that and he's just not connecting with the fan base um but unfortunately he, <laughs> oh my god he does pronounce like that unfortunately wow let's hear it one more time unfortunately Un it's not up unfortunately unfortunately um but unfortunately it's not up to him. Unfortunately, it's not. Because unfortunately, he's a very good person deep down, I think. What about you, Jay? How many how many Buffalo Traces are we going to have tonight? Fuck. Fuck yeah. Un unfortunately. Let's do it one more time. He's struggling with that, and he's just not connecting with the fan base. Um, But unfortunately, also, it's not up to him. Who is he jacking off in the air? Who's a double jack off? Who's getting jacked off in the air? Where's the double jack off coming from? So he has, he's struggling with that. Double double jack off, right? And he's just not connecting with the fan double base. Double jack off. Um, but unfortunately. 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 It's not up to him. Unfortunately, it's not. Because unfortunately, he's a very good person deep down, I think. What about you, Jay? How many, how many Buffalo Traces are we going to have tonight? Fuck. So. He jump scare. Big J jump scare Shorb. Right, J jump scare shop. God damn. Uh, let's continue. Um, let's play this one. Brendan Brendan Delia expresses his disinterest in paying for non Yushu fights. That's so funny. Solid card Clarissa Shields fighting on there. So that's just ESPN Plus pay per view and the zone pay per view, which I don't, I don't think I've seen before. Oh, uh, you didn't tell me it was pay per view. I gotta pay for this. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm paying for it. I mean, right? it's like, <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's kind of cute when you're younger and your friend starts to make, your friend makes up a word and it becomes a funny word in your group of friends and you start using it and shit. Cool. When you're like 10, when you're like 13, 15 max. But when you're a grown ass man, grown ass man, copying your friend's cadence especially when you're a comedian to make funnies and ha ha's is incredibly redacted is incredibly embarrassing is incredibly cringe and is incredibly lame i could never i could never well, i ain't paying for it right <laughs> oh this isn't free i guess not maybe they're <laughs> oh i'll catch it on the replay uh... oh i gotta pay for Look at that crystalline impression. Uh, boo. For a PF. Get your own jokes. Fell? Well, nobody's doing that, right? <laughs> At least all my money better. goes to the UFC. There have been pay-per-views with uh with which was it PFL that were just They sold win? five pay-per-views <laughs> with Kyla Harrison. Oh, but nobody's paying for that. I thought this was free. I was gonna have a good weekend. I have to pay for PFL and Bellator? Well, no one's going to fucking do that, right? This was a disaster. They're going to learn the hard way. We'll see what happens. I know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> hard way. We'll see what happens. I know what happens. <laughs> 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 One more time. That was good. Latour? Well, no one's going to fucking do that, right? This was a disaster. 
They're going to learn the hard way. We'll see what happens. I know what happens. <laughs> Oh, oh god anyway let's 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 move on from that one apologies for that burp into the microphone apologies for that apologies for that um another one sure back to hating on the ufc sure back to hating on the ufc let's see this one that this is where the ufc fucked up and you can see it with their with their the the placement of certain fights on UFC 300. UFC fucked up. They're they're too big. They're too fancy now. They're not paying attention to details. And UFC 300. Oh, it's a bit rich coming from you, right? The king of, the king, the king of not paying attention to the detail is saying, it, "Come on, come on, bro, really? Details, Papa, come on." The funny thing is about Brendan, though, most of his rants, anti-UFC rants, he's on point with. He says a lot of stuff that I agree with. But the issue with Brendan is that he doesn't know which side of the bed he's going to wake up on when it comes to the UFC. One day he wakes up, he tries to suck off Dana to be his friend because Dana's rich and famous now. Way more rich and famous than he was before, right? So Brendan wants to get in his good graces, wants to be friends with him, wants to gamble, wants to hang out at the UFC, maybe go to the Performance Institute. Like, he's obviously seen the error of his ways in terms of burning the bridges because now he probably doesn't feel super comfortable going to UFC events because he knows how petty Dana is. And most likely, if he turned up, Dana would, you know, go out of his way, I could imagine, to have him escorted out of the building. So he's seeing the error of, of his ways in that regard. But I also give him a lot of credit for being somebody that does talk quite forthrightly does talk quite openly and honestly about the UFC shortcomings, about their mistakes, about some of the fucked up shit they've done to fighters, about the stuff that they do with fight cards, about how they fucking hoodwink the fans, about, you know, how they have, you know, journal how they treat journalists and shit. Like, he does say a lot of true shit, but, you know, he's too much of a clout chaser to really stick with it because, you know, if Dana did invite him to the fight, he'd suddenly change his mind on what he has to say about fighting pay and shit. That's the issue with him. So he can, he's, even though he's got every right to say what he says, especially being a former UFC fighter, I got the feeling like Brendan could be bought. Brendan could easily be bought. If Dana gave him like the whole full treatment of like going to Performance Institute, interviewing him, being able to walk around the stadium before the fight starts and shit, prime seats, he'd completely change his tune on the UFC. So the hating he does it's kind of like the person that hates from the stands. You know what I mean? Because they can't get close to the fucking stage and shit. That's what it feels like. Or the person that hates from the outside because they can't get inside. That's what it kind of hates. That's what it kind of looks like. But what do I know? I would show you this. They stacked 298. They stacked 299. And 300, which they should have been planned for a year ago, was a year byproduct. Ago. And they're scrambling. Year they're ago. scrambling to get things done. It showed Max Holloway, oh, Justin Gaethje, Makes no fucking sense. Nobody's asking for it. Everyone loves Max Holloway. He's probably gonna get destroyed. We don't want to see it. We don't. What's it do for the division? It moves nobody forward. Everyone stays lukewarm on it. Max Holloway, by all means, should be the guy fighting Topiria next. That's a huge fucking feather in Topiria's cap. Okay, Max goes out there and gets so much brain. I get that, Max Holloway. And Justin Gaethje doesn't make sense right now. But how does Max Holloway and Ilya Taporia make sense right now? Do you know what I mean? Like, both fights are dumb, to be fair. Damage from Justin, the murder of Gaethje, that's out the window. So Max Holloway's not an option. Okay, so I guess we're going to do the winner of Yair Rodriguez, Brian Ortega. Yair in Spain, that makes sense. Spanish speaking. Big up, big up, big up, big up, big up bronze for, big up, no, big up, sorry. Boronda, Boronda 420. I went to bed, you were live. I wake up and you're live. Yeah, you know how it is. I'm here when you go to sleep and I'm here when you're awake. <laughs> we just saw Yair get absolutely destroyed by Volkanovsky. Okay. Max Holloway was the choice, but they didn't plan it out. They fucked up. 
Max Holloway's your choice. That should be the next guy. <laughs> you expect to say something super insightful, isn't it? Like, ooh. But he's he's on UFC 300 fighting a fight that makes no sense for anybody. They panicked. They agreed to all these fights. And now, now they're in a pit of that. This is where the UFC fucked up. So Brendan's back to hating on the UFC. He might have some points here, but it really doesn't matter because nobody cares. Um, let's move on. Different day, same old bullshit. Let's play this one. I was three and oh, told my friends. I tried putting 10K on Marab over Henry Cejudo and they wouldn't take my money. California laws, I guess. I don't know. My brother didn't have the money to help me out there. So I tried putting uh, 10K on Marab. Hold on. You tried to put 10K, but he didn't let you. Then you, then you wanted your brother to do it for you. What? So did you have the money or not? Also, this sounds, also, this sounds very, very, very questionable. What can you fall a laws? will not let you what what betting firm would not let you bet an obscene amount of money on a fight why wouldn't they take your money that makes no sense huh i was three and know told my friends i tried putting 10k on marab over henry cejudo and they wouldn't take my money california laws i guess i don't laws. know my brother didn't have the money to help me out there so i tried putting uh 10k on marab I gotta love the lols. Big up the lols. Big up the lols out there preventing Brendan from being great. Right? If only the lols would prevent him from wasting all his money, he would be far better off right now, right? If only the lols were in his favor. If only the lols would allow him to be great. Who knows what he could have been able to achieve? Big up Wingus McDingus. Big up has. Big up the chat. Bean cheese, bean, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, Nate. Yes! Big up Wingus. McDingus, I hope you're good, my G. Hope you are good, wherever you may be. I hope you are fucking good, all right? Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Hope you are well. Oops, got a bit of hair here that isn't my wife's. That might get me in trouble. Um, Let's continue. And continue. Um, how dare Chris repeat a joke? Let's play this one. Crazy. Got some crazy people in shape. Well, the guy who the guy who just snapped. Yeah, the guy who just snapped. He could have just snapped. Yeah, right, right. So like shit just went south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His <laughs> wife I, left him. And I had a gym there. membership in my, when I lived in my car. Uh, so. Yeah, but you could use it. Yeah, but you never yeah. look like that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> you were always the guy where people go. This motherfucker, he's like, yeah. I had a gym membership. Yeah, the reason why you had a gym membership is so you could use a shower. Hey, bro. Exactly. I mean? Hey, bro. Oh, I've had a gym membership. You just said that? <laughs> That's my joke. Did you just say that? Mm -hmm. Didn't hear it. Sorry. That's a good joke. Brendan pulling up somebody for repeating his joke is funny when he's a master of repeating. Right? You gotta love that, innit? Right? You gotta love the lack of self awareness. You gotta love that lack of self awareness. Okay. All right. No, I think it was good. And then you took it. I didn't know. I didn't. I I straight up <laughs> didn't listen. Didn't I hear you I say that? I talk low. I get it. It's a good joke. I wish I heard you say it because I would have been like, "Oh, it's good." Thanks, man. Instead, I thought of it myself. Mm. <laughs> That's actually a good one. From there. Instead, I thought of it myself. That was funny. And said it. And now it's not as good. Did you post? Because I because you already said it. Yeah, it's all good. Did you post the picture, the one you sent me and Brian? One more time. Crazy. I know some crazy people in shape. Well, the guy who the guy who just snapped. Yeah, the guy who just snapped. He could have just snapped. Yeah, right, right. So like shit just went south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His <laughs> wife I, left him. And I had a gym there. membership in my, when I lived in my car. Uh, so. Yeah, but you could use it. Yeah, but you never yeah. look like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? True. Yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> you were always the guy where people go. This motherfucker, he's like, yeah, I had a gym membership. Yeah, the reason why you had a gym membership is so you could use a shower. Hey, bro. You know exactly. what I mean? Hey, bro. Oh, I've had a gym membership. You just said that. <laughs> That's my joke. Did you just say that? Mm -hmm. Didn't hear it. Sorry. That was a good joke. All right. No, I think it was good. Hey, Griffin with his fucking dad laugh. <laughs> like, not even laughing. Like, look at him. What a dork, isn't it? Look at him. Look at him. 
You little dad laugh. <laughs> Fucking donut. Oh, hate him so much. I don't know why. <laughs> But he gets on my fucking nerves. Look at him. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I've had a gym member. She just said that. <laughs> That's my joke. Did you just say that? Mm-hmm. Didn't hear it. Sorry. That was a good joke. All right. No, I think it was good. And then you took it. I didn't know. I didn't. I I straight up didn't listen. Didn't I hear it. you I say talk that. low. I get it. It's a good joke. I wish I heard you say it because I would have been like, oh, it's good. Thanks, man. Instead, I thought of it myself mm. and said it. And now it's not as good. Did you post? Because, I, because you already said it. Yeah, it's all good. Did you post the picture, the one you sent me and Brian? Hmm. <laughs> Brendan criticizing other people for repeating jokes is hilarious when you consider his history. Let's continue. Papa got bored during this callers therapy session. Let's see this. Yeah. This is like textbook narcissism, right? Where when some when this conversation doesn't revolve around you or doesn't involve you, just completely tapping out. Let's see this. O- also, maybe don't, you know, send your therapy questions to a couple of podcasters. Maybe, you know, maybe go and get some actual real therapy. That also should be something that should be put out there. But hey, what do I know? You think Silver Hour was making these One of the only oh. takeaways I got from this was the same thing that I realized <laughs> as a child was like I would because I my parents are separated. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> and uh fifty six percent of the world was not that his? You, <laughs> you'll realize he's on his phone. He's on his fucking phone. Come on man. Don't be that disrespectful. Brendan went straight to his phone. Fucking hell Brendan. Who did what? Yeah. Like you know yeah, who yeah, was yeah, there yeah. for what who did what well, and, and by the way that's what I'm saying for you is like keep your cool and be patient. Because it will come back around later, and yeah. he'll just be older. But you know, you don't, you're not gonna get that gratification. Oh, shut up, Eric! Vacation now. Just keep doing you. Be the best dad you can be. Be patient, and it'll come back to you. It happens. Yeah, because I'm the, I'm not so much the fun one, and that's something my mother always told me when I was growing up. Was like, yeah, it's always fun when you go to your dad's because he doesn't have to make sure you stay on top of things. Mm. I do every single yeah, 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 day. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. You'll be all right, dude. You know, sounds like it's yeah, going well. I just well. wanted to hear it from people outside of yeah. you know. Yeah, you're good, man. We got you. You know, therapist. regular people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if we're regular people, but we Definitely we appreciate you thinking people. that. Then that vote. Well, um, I'm, I mean, you know. Chris trying to get him to shut up. Chris trying to get him to shut up. Chris trying to hurry him up so he shuts the fuck up. <laughs> no, these quote unquote professionals. I want to hear just. No, I know, buddy. I get it. We get it. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. He doesn't want to hear from professionals. He wants to hear from a couple of washed up stand up comics. Okay, cool, man. Yeah. Hey, you're doing all right. Just, just what Eric said is right. Take care, man. We'll talk to you next time. Holy yeah, buddy. Figure it out, man. I hey, appreciate y'all. Later, all right. brother. Yeah. Thanks, man. Hope you figure it out. <laughs> cool story. <laughs> I ain't gonna read all that, but I hope you're all right. Oh, we got Austin Casey. <laughs> what do those red buttons on the table do? I've oh. never watched that podcast even once. To be fair, this is a relic from King and the Sting, if I'm not mistaken. This are this is a relic from King and the Sting. That's how old these buttons are. So in King and the Sting, they used to have like um the whole premise was like King it or sting it. Right? That was a premise. And I guess King it meant it was good, sting it meant it was shit. And there'd be the different topics and they would press the button, say king it, sting it, and then you'd basically explain the reason why you press the button. But because they're redacted and because they're lazy, they continued with these buttons on the golden hour that has nothing to do with King and Sting. And, you know, they still have the buttons on the table. They still have the the random cups of coffee, the bottles. Everything, phones, it's a table full of shit. So yeah, that's a relic from the King of the Sting. That's how old those fucking buttons are. I don't even know if they work. I don't even know if they fucking work. They might not have any, they might not have even fucking batteries in them, but that's what they're doing. Um, big up this guy. He seems sincere enough. Hope you do get the advice and you know the actual advice that you actually need. But I think you are wasting your time, wasting your breath, wasting your money. 
asking a bunch of failed stand-up comedians, two of which were born into some level of wealth and riches who haven't really had a real job in their entire lives and who kind of live in a bit of a bubble and one guy who's an actual loser. So I think you don't need to ask those type of dudes for advice. You should probably be going to professionals and asking for their professional opinion so that they can help you. These guys aren't going to help for you any, anything. They don't actually care about you. Clearly, one of them was on his phone the entire time you were on it. The other one was trying to make you shut up, even though he likes fucking under 18 year olds, allegedly, right? So if I was you, I would go and sign up to fucking, what's that thing called? Better help or something, if you don't have the money. Or go and, you know, if you have the money, go to an actual therapist in person and see if they can help you out or to some sort of person with career advice, whatever you need. Go to somebody that actually has expertise, qualifications, experience of what you're talking about to help you, as opposed to two or three failed stand-up comedians and one who recently quit. You don't need advice from those guys. I beg of you, you do not need advice from those guys. But if you do, it's your money, it's your time. Do what the fuck you want. I don't care. Move on, move on, move on. We've got another one here called Hot Coffee. I mean, her face is I'm looking at it now. Fuck, but... No, but I mean, it's, it's an, uh, this is an artistic representation of her, obviously. And like, yeah. that's I mean, damn, that's a good Valentine's good. gift. Yeah. Can you yeah. mock one up so really quick? When you, so when you... Idiot. What the fuck? Well, let's see the, let's see the actual girl, though. Per, per, She's per, right there. Yeah, yeah, but obviously oh. zoom in, dude. This. And then the Mexico trip, which was an acceleration in a good way. Oh, okay. Course, Here's what's going on. Hey, can I take it from here? Here's what's going on. I've seen, I know exactly I've, where I've seen first road eight way too I know much. Exactly she's a bona fide 10, right? <laughs> so she's probably dating a few guys. You're great, but she wasn't sold on it. She's still dating a few guys. No. You sent her the painting. She's still talking to a few guys. And then she's like, this is a dope dude. It has less and finally broke her walls down. And now you guys are together. It has less to do with Boom! It problem has, solved. It, it Alex less, for 5,000. It, it has less to do with that nope. than it does. She goes, she's got, it's not that she's necessarily seeing other dudes. Guarantee I, it. I, I'm not saying that she isn't. She very well may be. Mm -hmm. But Chris. she is, she is inundated with dudes. Boom. And she doesn't give a fuck really. Right. That's it, what I'm saying. No, 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 no. But no. Oh, it's also, a little no, no, different. No, it's different. And, and, exact same. And, no, it's not. And, and it's so, not. and so, the exact same. She, she's, not. she's like, don't oh, say inundated. Oh, wait, I forgot. <laughs> don't say inundated, right? Because that pisses me off. Why? I don't know. I didn't like when you said it. <laughs> <laughs> like at a spelling bee. I think she's like, 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 use it in a sentence, uh, please. Every, use it in a sentence, please. Listen to me. Listen to me. Every time Origin, this, every God Almighty, bro. Three middle-aged men, all married with kids, trying to give you relationship advice. Please, for the love of God, don't take it from them. Please, please, for the love of God. Especially considering the allegations, you know, are looming over one of those guys' heads. Like, you don't want to take, you know, fucking dating, relationship, women's advice from a guy that allegedly likes young girls. Probably not the right way to go about doing things. I don't think so. But again, I could be wrong. I really fucking could be wrong. <clears throat> Da 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 What else we got here from um let's see here. What's the what oh yeah this one this is one what's this one? Burning Brendan burning all the bridges. Let's see this one. There you go. There's that. You got Mark Zuckerberg. They're like, mm, yes, oh yes. Yeah. And one's yeah. like, oh Zuckerberg. Uh, la, uh, la, la. Yeah. And then you got Dana there, worth a billion. You got Rogan there versus yeah. five five hundred million. Yes. You got Brian there versus two thousand dollars. Yeah. And then you got like all these billionaires, right? Yes. Like and these celebrities, and they're just watching the most violent men in the world going, yes, yes. Well, that's how it's. And they're feels. gonna jump on their private jets. It's just a weird vibe. <laughs> Oh, this moral, this, this moral shit, right, from Brendan is fucking hilarious, considering that you all know if he was to get invited, if he was to get a personal invite from Dana to jump on his PJ to the next fucking UFC event, to jump inside a black, you know, SUV and be driven to the fucking arena to get fully comped everything, access to everything behind the scenes, in front of the scenes. He would jump at the opportunity. But here he is 
talking from the outside of the fucking arena, complaining about all the shit they do on the inside because he can't get in. That's what is down. That's what it's come down to, which is sad because he's a former professional UFC fighter. He should have a level of like you know access still. You know he should be welcomed with open arms still. But no, instead he's out here on the outside ranting and raving about what the UFC does. He fucking, for some reason, hates Mark Zuckerberg. Um, he doesn't know if he hates Dana yet. And sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. It's such a weird place to be for him. Strange, strange, strange guy. One more time. There you go. There's that. You got Mark Zuckerberg. They're like, mm, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. One's yeah. like, oh, Zuckerberg. Ah, la, ah, la, la, la. <laughs> he hates Zuckerberg so much. Zuckerberg is doing everything that he'd want to do. Walk, you know, bring cage side with fighters fight being regarded well with fighters rolling with champions going to different gyms he'd love to be that guy but unfortunately people don't like him as much and then you got dana there worth a billion you got rogan there versus yeah. five, 500 million yes you got brian there versus two thousand dollars yeah and then you got like all these billionaires right yes. like and these celebrities and they're just watching the most violent men in the world going yes yes well that's how it and they're feels. gonna jump on their private jets it's just a weird vibe there you go okay bro weird vibe sure whatever you say brother whatever you say brendan doesn't like the ufc sometimes likes it sometimes doesn't like it strange guy strange guy what can you do what can you do absolutely redacted individual absolutely redacted individual it has to be said it really does have to be said um puppity 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 ba puppity 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 ba puppity 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 ba I think that might be it, you know. I think I might be it. I don't know if I've got anything more to check out here. Let me see. I don't have any new chin shit to talk about yet because I've not gone through those episodes yet. Ba 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 yeah, I think that might be it. I think that's it, my friends. It's been about three hours. It's been about three hours. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've liked it. Hope you've had fun like I've had fun. Will I see you again? Maybe. Maybe. You might see me tonight. You never know. You might see me tonight. You never know. You might see me tonight. You never know. Right? But big up the stream chat. Big up everybody tuning in. Big up all of you, right? Big up, big up, big up, big up. I appreciate you all for tuning in with me. It's been a pleasure, never a chore. I've loved every fucking minute of it, all right? Um, hope to see you again very soon, if you don't mind. If you don't mind, hope to fucking see you again very, very soon. I've got many things coming up. So, um, oh, shit, big up. Who, who, oh, I think it's Caseload Moses. Big up Caseload Moses for letting me know in the Discord that um, a new Louis C.K. special has dropped. So I'm going to be doing a reaction to the new Louis C.K. special that's dropped on my ne on my fucking Patreon. So if you want to check out my reaction, my live review, check out the Patreon. It's coming up. I'm going to be recording that later on today. And it'll be up later on in the night on Patreon. So check out my Patreon. It's only $1 to subscribe on there. So you'll see that happening on there. Um, I've also got a DJ mix I'm going to be doing on... What should I do? So it's Friday or Saturday? Uh, I might do it Friday So I've got a DJ mix I might do on Friday So if you're around, check out that I'll be live streaming that, I'll put up the schedule for that one Live stream later on tonight So you'll be seeing me throughout the weekend I'll be here throughout the weekend, don't worry I'm not going anywhere, I'll be at, I'll be here throughout the fucking weekend Keep an eye open for me That'll be it, that'll be at And I'll be here, alright, I'll be here Um, Before we end I'm going to play DSP the depression rant courtesy of meerkat mob as an outro so big up meerkat mob absolute fucking legend let's hope that plays on here and my computer isn't too slow but i'll be playing in the background as i fucking peace out so thank you for joining me everybody hope you've had a good time like the stream down below join the fucking discord join the patreon leave me comments let me know what you think of the show any suggestions put them down in the comments as well that'd be greatly appreciated hit me up on the discord that's where you can get in touch with me straight away and i'll reply back to you and yeah man see you guys again very 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 soon okay see you soon man see you soon 
Never going pop case with Moses. I'm in the streets. I'm in the gutter with you, man. In the mud. You know what I mean? In the mud. In the fucking tunnels. You feel me? All right? Under the floorboards. Right? In the fucking roof. See? On the roof, actually. In the fields. All right? You get me? No whip needed. I'm working hard. We're both working hard. You get it. You know the struggle. You know the vibes. You know how much it hurts. You know the hustle. You know. Come on. Let's not play games. Let's not play games around here. All right? Cool. Anyway, random shows ending. This fucking video is taking ages to load because you know how my internet is. It is what it is. The computer is what it is. Whatever. It's going to load in a minute. It's not going to take that much time. It's going to be an outro thing. You guys are going to hear it. You're going to fucking love it. But don't delay. I'm wasting time saying filler words so I don't have any fucking dead air because I fucking hate dead air. I'm going to keep on talking, keep on rambling, keep on adding words to words so that there's no dead air in the rant towards the end. You guys are going to continue liking, leaving comments. Let me know what you think of the flipping show. We're going to keep on going. I'm gonna be twitching in the flipping camera like I've got epilepsy, like I'm on fucking ketamine, like I'm on some crack thing. You know what it is. We're gonna keep on going until the video plays. We're not gonna stop. It's gonna be non continuous flipping, rambling, and going on and on. And then when that video plays, you're not gonna hear anything from me. But until that video plays, I'm gonna keep on talking. I'm gonna keep on going, keep on going, keep on talking, keep on talking and going because that's what I am. What I am is Agostino, keep on talking, Zinger. That's my fucking middle name. That's what he used to call me when I was in school. I never stopped. I kept on going. I never flipping took my fucking pedal off the accelerator. I kept flipping pushing that thing. I kept hustling. I kept going vroom, vroom, vroom. Nothing ever flipping stopped me. The words would keep coming out of my mouth with no flipping pause, with no flipping delay, with no flipping stutter. The thing that you heard before wasn't the stutter. It was me trying to get the words out of my mouth. I was moving along. Now, hilariously, this thing. morning. There we go. It's I'm there. just on Twitter checking for now news. Now there. Yeah. Yeah. To talk about today. <laughs> And there's a post, of course, from one of my detractor <sighs> idiots saying, I have clipped the moment where Phil told someone who says that they are suffering from depression that, hey, at least they're not playing Honda in Street Fighter. Okay. This moronic idiot, this mouth drooler, I'm playing ranked Street Fighter 6 with Honda trying to hit master. What the fuck does that have to do with the stream? Nothing. It's a blatant attempt to derail the stream. You're not going to come to a Street Fighter 6 ranking stream to get advice Go. on depression. Go. It's not going to happen. Go. This person is obviously doing this to derail the stream to try to distract these fucking morons. Hey, stupid. Hey, I have, I have depression. depression. You dumb fuck. I actually have it. You're a fucking idiot. Get fucked. You stupid loser Get who fucked. thinks you know anything about anything in real fucking life. You know nothing. You're the epitome of a waste of life. Get fucked. Go fuck yourself. You're a loser. You have no power over anyone on this planet. Why if you find? disappeared today, no one would care. That's the truth of the matter. So go make as many clips as you fucking want with your loser circle. This is bullshit. And they deserve to be treated like that. People like that should never be treated with respect because they don't treat anyone else with respect. They need to be downgraded to what they really are. The scum at the bottom of the fucking barrel of YouTube. That's how they should be addressed every time you address them. They should be talked down to because they don't deserve anyone's time. How many idiots talk shit about me in Street Fighter 6? Thousands. There's too many dumb people on Earth. It's depressing. That's depressing. The fact that there's that many dumb asses on Earth who are just happy to revel in misery and toxicity, whether it's real or not, if it's manufactured, they still don't care. This is their life, to sit there and just shit on other people. What a worthless existence. If all those people disappeared overnight, this planet would actually be more a positive place. Morons out there who just like the toxic nonsense that's made up on a daily basis. Moron going, Duh. you're an idiot who doesn't understand the game. Fuck you. You don't know mean nothing to me or anyone else who has a brain in their fucking head between your two ears. When you're a group of losers, can keep being a loser. Really, we're all still waiting for your point. You haven't had one yet. Your points are just nonsensical things that you repeat ad nauseum like a bunch of parrots or sheep. Because you're so dumb. There's a bunch of dumbest people, the dumbest bottom of the barrel people on the planet, all circle jerking each other off on the internet. Nobody cares about you.